A wizard is never late. He arrives precisely when he means to. Guys, what's up? Welcome to the education stream in Heroes of the Storm. I'm going to load up the first replay and I will introduce... This is from Funky. I'm actually in this one. I think he was trolling with this submission. But we shall we shall see. We shall see. <laughs> Tough luck. We're, we're going with it anyway. Um, <laughs> but yeah, we are uh, in, this, uh, in this stream today. We're going to go for three hours. HS Kaizen, thank you for the follow. Hello, what's up? We're gonna be doing, um, I'm gonna be bringing people through uh, games, you can send them in. There's a thing in the, yeah, this this side, that, that corner down there, you see? Submit replays to nubkexmail at gmail.com. You can send your replays in there and I'll go through them uh, on the least, uh, live stream. And uh, yeah, cover them. We'll see how it goes. As you can see, this one, let's use the, let me turn this down temporarily. Oh, anyway, it's going to be fine if I just, uh, yeah, I just tap out. It's okay. Um, and there's actually, I'm in this one. Uh, Slawik, Darmak, um, this is Funky Monkey, Cascon, and Nikarasu. So this should be interesting. This was Team League. I think that we got, we got owned. We lost nearly every, every Team League game. So I'll just, I'll read you through the email Funky sent in here. He says, I usually don't like sending in Team League replays. Feel like I did the best I could in this game. Most of my team played terribly. I didn't play much last week, so I don't have many good replays to send in. In this case, uh, this is a case of I played my best and my team didn't play well. Is there anything I could have done to change the outcome of the game? Oftentimes I feel like I'm playing too safe. I felt like our Vala, that's me, kept overextending. Our tanks kept engaging at bad times and our Grey Mane kept dueling. Map Battlefield of Eternally. Rank Platinum slash Diamond because of Team League. Yeah, um, yeah. So, yeah, it would have been around there. Um, and then Heroes Regar. All right. <laughs> uh, has <laughs> just sent in a replay. Loudness, sorry. I like uh, when it, the gray main that you so, so freely flamed has sent in a, re, a replay where he's flaming you. So that's going to be fun. We, I don't know if we'll bother looking at all that. Anyway, I will actually focus on uh, all the, the proper stuff. So, yeah, we're actually going to focus on your gameplay. That will be the main focus. You can catch the original game on the VOD on my channel, or Nub Streams, which is my YouTube channel where I put up VODs. Um, but, yeah, we're, we will just focus in this one on uh, the Regar and what you could have done or not done, and so on and so forth. I like Lightning Bond at level 1. Going to be able to race the Immortals really well. I mean, if we throw in a quick pause and we look at the team comps, it's Lunara here in the top left. Li Ming, Oriel, Sonia, and Johanna. Uh, whereas your team <laughs> is Vala, Arthas, Artanis, uh, Rhaegar, and um, Greymane. So your team can race the Immortal crazy well. You're way better at racing. Um, you could leave pretty much any one of the heroes in the way to... Apart from you wouldn't leave Rhaegar or Arthas on their own. But you could re leave any of the other ones to, uh, to solo the Immortal and defend. You could just race it with all five of the enemy team. Effort does that. But yeah, we shall focus on, on the Regar play here. Eating an orb like a noob. That's probably worth it overall. Okay, so far so good. I think you heal the Arthas instead of the Vala there, which isn't good. I'm gonna make sure to heal her. Yeah, right there, I mean, you had your totem available. It's possible you could have thrown down a totem to save the Arthas. Probably would have died either way. But it's possible you could have saved Arthas with that. <laughs> and I know you walked in into the orb to save the health on the tower. Yeah, you can see I'm playing really badly, me, in this game. I was just playing real badly that day. I've literally been hit by everything. It's terrible. It's really bad. Um, I mean, just in general, I'd say you probably are playing a bit too passive. Like, you're on full health. I mean, nothing wrong with being on full health, but it's a little bit much. Alright, you did that fairly well. Unfortunately, it's not going to work out. Yeah, I feel like you definitely could be a bit more... Wait, who did you heal there? Did you not heal the Greyman? <laughs> hmm. 
Okay, you need- yeah, ooh, that was close. You left that too late as well. You need to heal him. Alright, Hearthstone here is fine. He healed a minion? Alright, well there you go. There's something he could have done differently. You could have healed the gray main. He misclicked a minion. Alright. There you go. <laughs> if you backed, you would have survived. Uh, gray main, maybe, maybe. I mean, that's just clearly the, the Regar's fault though. What a big noob. What a big noob. Okay. I mean, he lost like a split second basic attacking the immortal there, running extra in circles, which you don't want to do. But it's a small thing. But I mean, you want to like dodge the stone as short as possible and then go straight back in with the feral lunge. Seeing as you said you make no. You, seeing as you said you made no mistakes and no misplays, we're gonna be real harsh about li every single little thing you do that's small and that's wrong. Ah, yeah, so I remember this part in the game, because that was shot calling that we could push bottom, because... So this is like an interesting thing, right? Just as a, a general strategic thing. But, like, our immortal is super weak. Right? Our immortal is super weak. Um, it's not going to do too much. So I was kind of saying, well, hey, we could gank bottom and push in bottom instead. Because I feel like this team is going to send everyone to defend. You can kind of exploit that. They send everyone to defend something that's not super worth defending. The first immortal with no shields is really weak. We could exploit that a bit and push in bottom. Um, I remember you guys like all get killed here. Alright, I was going to say want to buy healing totem. Want to buy slowing totem. Yeah, you're playing too passive there. I mean, it's happened a couple of times as well. It's like your teammates have been like kind of stuck out of position. I mean, they probably would be dying anyway, but you want to throw down a totem to slow down the enemy team and, and help them to heal. That would be better. But I mean, it's not... I think they probably would have died. Like the Arthas death earlier, the uh, the Artanis death there, I think they would have happened anyway. Um, but definitely throwing, like use the totem to slow down the enemy team when they're trying to chase your team. Can, can buy the seconds and heal. That can make the difference. Uh, this is nice to take the siege camp. I like it. <clears throat> right there was a lot of wasted mana. Both the, you didn't need to do the E or the W. I think you had a couple of interesting options there. Uh, again, strategically, is either one you have to run down and try to defend bottom, or two you just try to push top super hard with the siege camp. I mean, you could do both things. I mean, I think it's definitely possible that you could potentially push down with the siege camp, be like, guys, I'm gonna push top. We have a siege camp, it's only Johanna up defending, we can like, wreck their fort, we can trade forts basically. Uh, it's worth considering. Probably worth putting that beam down as well. Yeah, there we go, all right, nice. Just to make sure everyone's gonna be okay. I mean, it's a bit far forwards, but they're not actually killing it. Okay, there we go. Again, I'm, I'm, uh... Oh, <laughs> is he gonna live? <laughs> I think that would have been another good opportunity to uh, throw down a slowing totem again to peel right over there. Uh, when you see them coming in, like, you were running away and you dodged the Johanna stuff, the totem might have been, probably would have been worth it, um, to throw that in. Yeah, the, the tanks were gold. Did <laughs> you learn to dodge? But yeah, I think to use the totem, that's like the main thing I'm seeing so far. Uh, like, honestly, I don't know if it would make much of an impact, but it's the small things that you could throw in totems to heal. That's my fault for dying there. I mean, you could have thrown the totem down, but I still would have died. That was just my bad, so all those shots. But yeah, I mean, that's... Like, it's just the Earthbind totem is not being used effectively at all. I suppose this comes as well from... You never played Rhaegar, probably, when Colossal Totem and, and Earthgrasp were, like, hugely in the meta. Um, or it's been Lightning Bond for the last few patches. So that probably affects it as well. You're not used to using it. 
Yeah, you are supposed to peel. And secure kills with the Earthbind Totem as well. It does both things. You need to use both aspects. Okay. You could kill that Sonya there. Yeah, it, mm, you could have killed the Sonya with the Feral Lunge. Hmm. But yeah, I mean, like, generally speaking, it, uh, like, I think you need to be a bit more preemptive with the healing totems, and definitely the Earthbind totem. Like, the totems, uh, I watched the cleanse now as well, I haven't been looking for that. I mean, you only just hit seven. But yeah, I mean, I think you're playing pretty well, to be honest with you. I think you're playing pretty well. Uh, but yeah, using totems to peel more and to control team fights and getting the healing totem down like preemptively for when the game is gonna start. Sitting AFK here is bad, real bad. And watch the healing totem positioning as well. I mean, she's not destroying it. And she should. It's just one basic attack to destroy it. You need to place it somewhere where they can't kill it, but it's going to heal as many people in your team as possible. <laughs> Holding spacebar. Yeah, it's pretty, pretty bad. All right, so like you can see, this team you're really, we're really far behind at this point. Level eight, level ten, it's really bad. So they're gonna invade there, they're gonna get a kill on Artanis. So this is really bad news. Hey, that was a smart time to cleanse just in case. I remember that in game. You had a, you actually did have some pretty decent cleanses. Bottom lane, yeah. Yeah, so this is this is really bad from the team. It's like the Arthas is going bottom instead of the Artanis. It's not good. Um So yeah, I mean that's nothing that you can control. Well, I mean you could be in the voice chat. It's a small thing though. Again, like the healing totem is way too late. I mean like you've put the healing totem down after like two of your teammates are dead. So that's not good. Okay. I mean, that fight might be even worth rewinding back and watching again. Yeah, oh, you don't have a mic? Yep. Hey, this is a good Hearthstone. I like it. Okay, you're slow leaving the fountain. Like, this is a small tip as well, right? But you never want to leave the fountain with full mana, because you've got mana regen. Uh, oops. I, I, I don't know how much Rhaegar has, but you've got a little bit. So you want to leave with, like, 90% mana, and then you'll regen mana as you go. So you're losing a few seconds in terms of getting there. Yeah, I, I actually want to watch that one again. I want to watch some of these again. You're getting a headset tomorrow? Good. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I'm definitely thinking... Uh, no cleanse? I, I didn't spot the cleanse. I'm definitely noticing the position with the Rhaegar. It's like, you're not... You definitely could be more aggressive, I think. Like, in terms of jumping in and pressuring down some heroes. So I actually want to watch that again. Actually, let's rewind it and let's watch both of those fights. Again, I don't think the first one is much else you could have do. You could have done. Like I'm definitely healing totem stuff could be a little bit better. You could tell I'm playing horrible and you're playing passive. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it was like our team was super dysfunctional in this game to be honest. So it all kind of it all led together to go into that. So let's go to the Regar again. So we have this team fight here.
Yeah, you're extremely passive. So I mean like right there, it's like you're you're so far back, right, that Artanis flips someone in and I mean you're just dropping down you're throwing down spells without fair lunging in, right? So it's like you didn't even get the fair lunge off. Where normally like Artanis jumps in, you fair lunge forwards, you lock him down with the earthbind totem. Um, I mean, like, Artana swapped someone in and you, you were so far back, you ran forwards and you just cast your W and then you're running back. Like, right here, running back isn't good. I mean, you want to be in there using your basic Texas Regar. You're pretty tanky. So, like, right here in the terms of positioning, again, like I said, I've got to be super critical on this game. Uh, I mean, our team doesn't want to be fighting, but, I mean, you can be in there. Lightning Bond is doing no value. You've got no value out of Feral Lunge. You're not going to get any value out of Earth's Grasp either. Uh... And then you've got like two teammates are dead without the totem going down. So I mean that's something you could have done better. I mean I think the fight, like I said, I think the fight still would have gone to shit either way. But that was something that you could have uh, improved on. You want me to be critical? How else could you improve? That's true. But yeah, I think this is a really good time to Hearthstone, like I said. Um, and then. Yeah, you can see you stay in the base, just like, it's just a second too long, but it adds up. Alright, let's speed this up until we get to this fight. Okay, so going into this fight... Alright, let's watch it and pause it as we go. Okay, so we're gonna throw out a heal. Uh, hang on, I think I can... The camera's gone wonky. Because this isn't what the camera's looking like last time. Alright, this is better. Alright, so we're coming in here. Team is pretty split, and they're gonna be done by this immortal, are they? Not quite. Okay, you don't have Ancestral. Again, like, you're running away on full HP. You could be in there, like, burning down the Sonya. You've got, like, you've got your Mount and you're not using it. Okay, and, and like, right here, for example. Alright, you jump in. They pop the Aegis. You probably want to run out. You don't want to really stand in that. I'm going to take a bunch of damage. No reason really. Yeah, you're just gonna die. Feels bad. <clears throat> yeah, it's just definitely too too passive. No clans incoming. I, I don't mind the clans in that one. Like whatever. There's no clans, I don't know. Like he, he probably could have cleansed some stuff, so that, that's a smaller thing. Like that's definitely like that's very difficult. Uh to do right. I mean I'd be fixing the clan. I fix clans. I think I fix the way you use the clans much later. Um, like, clans is the last thing I worry about with the support. I'm like, get good at the mechanics of everything else on the support, and then work on clans, because clans is by far the most difficult thing to do. Um, and if you're trying to do clans uh, without being able to do the other stuff, you can make life really difficult for yourself. Okay, that was a good healing totem this time. It, the placement wasn't perfect, but it's a good idea. The bot Arthas definitely makes things hard. Miss Ancestral. Miss Ancestral. Alright, so I mean, right there, I mean, difficult because it's a bot Regar, right? But, I mean, a bot, sorry, a bot Arthas. There's def there definitely was option there. Like, you, you could have saved the bot Arthas, easy. Um, and cleansed it. And difficult because it's a bot, but you missed the Ancestral twice. Okay. There's definitely a possibility here for going in. Hey, first basic attacks on heroes in the game. All right, cool. So we actually win the immortal. <laughs> Racist versus bots. Didn't want to use Ancestral on Arthas because he's a bot. I mean, it doesn't really matter if he's a bot or not. Letting a hero die is bad. Um, so you have to try save the Arthas. But I mean, that's, it doesn't matter too much. I mean, like, how to play with bots isn't super relevant. I mean, to be honest, how to play with bots, 90%, 95% of the time you're gonna lose. So there's no point worrying about that too much. Okay, I mean, right here, this, like, whole fight's a bit of a mess. Um, and again, like, yeah, I don't, you're so, you're way too passive on the Rhaegar. 
Like right there, it's kind of a mess because your team, like the team is like fighting their heroes over there, right? They're trying to dive and fight them. Um, and you're still focusing on the fort. I, again, as a Regar, you need to be following them a bit more. And again, like Earthbind Totem is just getting no value once again. Um, whereas if you can throw that Earthbind Totem down, it might lock him down. Your team might get some kills or something. You can join in with your damage. I mean, it's nice to kill the fort and all, but it would have been better to do to, to join in with your team what they were doing. Sorry, I've messed up the, the, the camera. Okay, right there, I mean, yeah, it's just too passive. Is there any point in following bad engages by tank? You only follow good engages? Yeah, you have to follow, like, every engage. Um, I, I mean, well, not every engage. That's a bad rule. There's no strict rule for it, right? So in terms of following engages from, from your tanks or to, in terms of what you're following, I mean, generally, you want to follow most things, that's the general rule, but it's not a strict rule. Sometimes an engage is so bad or so stupid that you want to, you don't want to do it. Like you, you want to, you want to just run away and let them die sometimes. But generally speaking, you do want to follow. I think like right there as well, it wasn't necessarily a bad engage. It might've been a great one, but it could have worked okay. You need to follow it in more. A small thing in that fight as well was to do an arrow leaping strike in. I mean, you've got Feral Lunge, you need to use it, and you need to like just jump on her and punish her. You do quite a bit of burst damage. Um, so like the Lunara or the Sonyas are really good ones to hit. Oh yeah, this is like the Earth Shield saves. <laughs> saves Grey Mane. Thanks for the cheer! 10 out of 10 stream, thanks Etherhead. <laughs> All right, cool. I like doing the siege camp as well. It's a nice call. All right. Yeah, and then it's good for both of you to our <laughs> God Regar. Earth Shield OP. Yeah, it's interesting. I, I think it's really interesting that you're coming away from the game going, man, I played perfectly, there's nothing else I could have done. I think there's, I think you're playing pretty well for the most part, but there's definitely like, there's lots of little things that can be improved upon. That being said, there has been like, obviously you've been losing the game, so it's tough. I mean, you're heading XP now. Um, I suppose it's pretty even. Like, you guys are actually, we're actually ahead at this point, so this should be good. Um... But yeah, I mean, it's like we were a bit dysfunctional as a team. But yeah, there's definitely small things you can improve upon. It does become difficult when you're dysfunctional. The team is like dysfunctional kind of that and stuff. But yeah, I mean, at this point, like going forwards, sort of priority during team fights, right? Your priority during team fights will be to uh, probably protect the Arthas with the lightning shields. Um, you know, Feral lunge in on like. Lunara would be a great target, or Sonya is a big priority kill target as well. Um, you know, make sure to get the Earthbind Totems off. Save whoever needs saving with Ancestral. Get the Healing Totem in a good spot so it's going to do consistent AoE healing. Try and mitigate some of Lunara's damage. Uh, and yeah, I mean, get in and be get maximized Lightning Bond value, all that sort of stuff. That's definitely what you want to be doing. Okay, giving the Lightning Bond to uh, Greymane, it's okay. It, you're better off doing it on Arthas, especially because he's way in the front and he's losing life. He's actually popped army to dead. Okay, the Ancestral's okay. This is like a messy fight on several fronts. Oh yeah, again, like, I, you definitely, you're playing it so passive, man. <laughs> uh, I mean... You're doing a good job in terms of protecting. I mean, it's awkward because you don't have confidence in the team, but you need to like follow up on kills more and play more aggressive as Rhaegar. Like he's he is an aggressive support. You need to dive in more when your team is diving. You need to be able to do the heals while still being aggressive enough in terms of positioning and creating control. It's like you're doing a great job playing uh, defensive Rhaegar. Uh, which is a very important skill as well. Like you don't wanna like you were saying earlier, like you don't wanna 
You don't want to be crazy divey Rhaegar so much that you put yourself in harm's way all the time and it's terrible. But you also need to play more aggressively and create more pressure and actually get use out of all of your stuff. Like you're better off playing something more defensive otherwise. Where did she go? That was weird. Okay. Again, like you need, you're also casting Earth Shield on the wrong target. You need to cast Earth Shield on one of the tanks. It gets more value because they got more max HP, and they're also going to be the ones that are actually in melee range, and it enables them to get into melee range. You don't want to like give the Earth Shield onto Greymane because number one, Greymane might not necessarily take any damage. He might not necessarily do any damage with uh, the Lightning Shield. Um, and you might even bait him into jumping in when he doesn't want to. Okay, that was a good jump in. He got knocked back, but that's alright. Good heal. And it's ultimately a win. You don't trust the tanks, though. I mean, I know you don't trust the tanks, but your, your job is to keep the tanks alive. And it's gonna be like this situation where things just get worse, because like if you're not supporting the tanks properly, then it, it makes them... It makes their job way more difficult, so then you're gonna be like, well, they're not doing a proper job tanking if you're not actually giving them the support that they need. Ah, well. I mean, full shield immortal, couple of deaths. Kind of unfortunate, but it's not the end of the world there. I don't think there was much you could have done there. It's your biggest issue. I support trust. Yeah. Trust is bad. This is like silly feed. <laughs> that was a bad idea. Rip. That's me feeding. <laughs> Why end the game when you can throw? Yeah, we probably should have backed off earlier. I don't like specifically for you on the Ragar, I don't think there was anything much that you could have done differently right there. Like in terms of that whole sort of sequence, I think he did a good job in that one. Might have been a bit late on the healing totem on the immortal again. I didn't quite see that, but apart from that, I mean that's a it's a smaller thing. I think he did the rest well. B guy here to watch you throw. <laughs> yeah, Arthur's out of position. You want to throw down a slowing totem. Again, it's like no slowing totem. <laughs> okay, earth shield. Alright. Okay. Again, like that's the sort of... Like they're coming through a choke point. That's a really good position to throw down a slowing totem. Another thing you can do... It wasn't super relevant there, but... You can throw down a slowing totem and then throw a lightning shield on it. And that will do AoE damage, so it will basically dismount people. So you can use their totem with a lightning shield to dismount and slow and just disrupt a whole lot of chases. That can be good. Alright, good for a lunge, and then... Okay, back in the way. Okay. Like this time, I think you're playing this team fight well. You need to heal. You need to heal him. Holy shit. <laughs> Camera flubbed there. You need to heal him sooner. Got away with it in the end, but definitely need to heal him sooner. GM feed. Feels bad. Oh well. Still one death for three, so it's a win for our team overall. <laughs> But like in that fight, I felt I I feel like in general in that fight you played an awful lot better. <clears throat> like you played you played a lot better in that fight because like you did go aggressive. Like your health was a resource that was actually being made use of. It was funny. I I, I think it's funny is like you you were playing honestly more passively at full HP in previous fights, and then in that fight at half HP you're actually positioned quite far forward, like properly. I thought that was kind of interesting. Um, you are much more aggressive in terms of positioning there, and I like that. Yeah, tapping a well here is okay. 
Um, I, I think it's good actually, yeah. So you're gonna like push, they've only got two heroes alive, you're gonna push this first immortal phase, try to get it down quickly. Okay, and it's like, a bit overzealous in the dodges there. Good lightning shield to burn it down. Okay, good wolf form, burn it down. I like it, I like it. This is a big lead on the immortal. I don't remember how we lose this game at this point. Uh, do I get killed? I think I get killed or something. Yeah, I walk the wrong way and die. Because I'm dumb. I think I walk like up here. Yeah, I walk like right up there and get instantly killed. <laughs> so that's just my fault. There's nothing you could have done there. Yeah, and then he goes down as well. That's my fault. That was me. That was me. Derping it up. Me derping it up. Uh, it's not game over yet, though. Like, it's not gonna be the strongest immortal for them, so that's good news. No clans. You possibly could have saved Artanis with the clans, yeah. Uh, but again, probably would have died. Uh, Arthas. This is... Whoa. Okay, now you're gone way too deep. And this is not a fight that you guys are gonna win. Like, okay, so like right there when it was you and the Arthas against the Johanna, like you guys, you wanted to cleanse the Arthas and then run away, right? You just want to cleanse the Arthas out. Yeah, uh, Nukazaru feeds as well. You wanted to cleanse the Arthas and get him out of there. You didn't want to pick that fight. I mean, you're never going to kill Sonya, Johanna, as Arthas and Regar. It's not going to happen. Um, but yeah, that's a small thing again as well. I think for the most part, the end of this phase has been going wrong because uh, of, well, like me, firstly, mostly. Uh, and then Greymane feed as well. But yeah, that was just me going the wrong way. It was pretty bad. Pretty bad. Tactical feeding. <laughs> Sneak Bucky, that's definitely not an option. Okay, I think at this point I was asking if you had cleanse, because I want to try to get a couple of extra rotations off on this immortal. I actually hit Johanna instead. Feels bad, man. No extra monster hunter damage. Feels bad. Whoa, those guys were up. Two forwards. Thanks. Oh, he's in super deep. Yeah, okay, I like the earth shield on him. It's good. Again, the slowing totem would have been good, too. Earth shield onto Arthas. Okay, cool. Raymane's in too deep. Okay, now your positioning is bad. <laughs> That's a screw up there. Okay, we'll watch that fight back again. Well, actually, we'll just see how this ends. It's not quite over yet. Ah, oh, Johanna shields. Feels bad. But right there, that fight was a mess. So, that, like, yeah, you're saying tilt starts coming into it. I can see that. Oh, what the fuck did I just press? I don't mean to press whatever I just pressed. No, no, no. Okay. Replay client's frozen. Feels good. Such a good, such a good client. The Johanna on the enemy team is garbage. Yeah, they're pretty shit. Like, well, that's the thing. Um, I think we've, have we gone right back to fucking start? Yeah, fuck. So what's that? Like 15 minutes in? Fuck. So yeah, um, it's like, uh, well, in team league, uh, me and Nikisari were masters. And I think the other three were gold. Uh, and then the enemy team, I think we're all platinum or something. Something like that. Platinum and diamond, maybe? I don't know. Well, Blessed Shield is really good, dude. <laughs> it was 21 minutes in? Okay. It was pretty near the end of the game. Yeah. Okay, so like 20. Blessed Shield is probably better than Falling Sword in general. <laughs> I mean, I want to watch that team fight back because that was pretty messy and pretty bad. Okay, so. Yeah, you're right. So it's even further ahead. We'll just like speed through it. Oh, yeah, so this is where I feed. Yeah, so this is the Soul Immortal phase. Alright, that's cool. Let's play. Just sip through this. Okay. So right there is where you pick a fight, no one you pick in. 
Alright, cool, cool. So, coming up to this fight, I want to watch this one again. <laughs> that was annoying, Immortal's turn position. Alright, so first of all, the tank should not be going out there. They're gonna just take free poke damage, which you don't want to take. Okay, and now Artanis finds himself in a really rough spot. I think it's a really good Earth Shield there, knowing that he's gonna kinda screw up. Might even be worth cleansing him at this point. Because he's messed up so much. And now Arthas, yeah, I mean, this gets super awkward. I can understand this fight, at least this early part, going wrong. Because the tanks have really fucked it up. And you're trying to deal with, like, a crazy scary push. So you have to dodge that. I mean, like, a slowing totem down there would be okay. Like, nice heal on the Arthas. Right at the end. I think you do save him. I mean, cleanse hasn't been used, but again, I don't mind that too much. Lunara gets killed at the back, so that's cool. At this point, like, going into Ghost Wolf would be okay. You've gone, like, way too deep here. Um, like, going into Ghost Wolf, but, like, running right into the front now is not a good idea. You want to be staying back a bit more. So you guys get, like, instantly killed, basically. And he's keep leaming some resets. Oh well, no, sorry, it was just you that died. Yeah, you went too far forward, so that would have been a good point to stay a bit off to the side and hit the Johanna. You just pressure her back a little bit without being hit by the skill shots from the Li Ming. Um, that would have been more valuable, and you could still be in range to do the heals and stuff. And then you would have been able to do the Storm Shield level 20. Like, a Storm Shield here could have changed this quite a bit. Okay, so that was unfortunate. But to be fair, right there, I mean, again, it's like, that's a very awkward fight. So it's pretty understandable. That team fight was a mess. It's pretty understand. Like, that's the kind of fight where you kind of go, okay, yeah, sure, I could have done these things a little bit better. But honestly, it was such a mess that that's the kind of fight that you do make more mistakes in. But still, like, it's good to, like, minimize those mistakes and understand them where possible. So, like, you did go, you went too deep at the end. It's pretty much the main mistake. Um, is that you went too deep in the end. Um, our team's actually ahead at this point. Sure, we're behind the next P, but both have level 20. We've got an extra keep. So we're winning, technically, which is hilarious. Um, but yeah. <laughs> that always stings a bit. Okay. I presume there's a big throw here. This should be interesting. Do I teach after matches against you? What do you mean, either head? I I think this is the first one I've covered in the Thursday stream with me in it. Actually. I normally just take any replays. Okay. Oh. <laughs> One thing, it seems like your camera as well is fairly focused. Like your camera, your camera control is not the best. Obviously you're saying that's, you know, that's something that you are improving upon. Um, but just, it, it just seems to me that your focus right here is more on the back line. Like sure, we're both, it's like the two grandmasters and all, but still, I mean, your focus is more on the back line than on the front line. And the front line is where your main focus needs to be. Uh, and on like following up on their engages uh, and being ready to support them in that. It's a decent earth shield. Uh, Alright, yeah, there's not much, honestly, you could have done there. It was just, you know, Greymane gets caught out. And then Artanis went out of position, gets killed. Yeah, that's that's rough. That's pretty rough. I don't, there wasn't, that wasn't your fault there. I mean, that's just, uh... 
Yeah, Greymane was kind of getting caught out of position, but he was going to be okay. He could save him, and then Artanis just instantly got himself killed. Um, so yeah, that sucks. <laughs> that really sucks. <laughs> Oh yeah, that Arthas screws up here. Again, not nothing you could really do there. Maybe like throwing in the totem earlier, but yeah. That's tough. Yeah. <laughs> nothing you could really do. So many viewers? How many viewers do we have? I, I can't quite see. Oh my god, yeah, we got loads of viewers. Holy shit, 800? Nice. Alright. Well, we're approaching the end of this, so this is clearly where the throw comes down. Yeah, okay, I mean, at this point, the game is pretty much over. We'll just focus on what you do at the end. I don't think it really matters, though. But, yeah, um... I mean, at this point, the Immortal is just... It's too strong. It's just gonna push down and it's gonna destroy you. There's nothing you could really do. Uh... I mean... I mean, maybe, you know what, backdooring probably would have been the best idea, to be honest. It's very difficult with the Arthas dead, though. I mean, it's, it would have been like a maybe 5-10% success chance, but it's probably going to be the best chance we would get. It's good storm shield. Again, we're spending a lot of time running around here while Sony is diving without using a lot of our spells. Mist Ancestral. I mean, that's just something small, like just in terms of the timing. We had plenty of time to do that. It just felt like in that point right there... I mean, this is just the thing we'll end this on, because this is obviously the game ending. And it doesn't really matter, because you're pretty much guaranteed to lose anyway. But as, like, they're pushing in there, like, certainly the camera control, it felt like you lost control of the camera and it's a bit clunky. Like, instead of being, like, on point with where you're moving, getting the heels in on time, being preemptive with it, uh, and, like, being able to fire lunge in and stuff, it felt like you were very much, like, you're kind of running away and kind of catching up on yourself. Uh, right there, it felt like very much you're running away and catching up on yourself. And you're kind of slow, slow using nearly all of your abilities there. And not getting any sort of counter aggression or anything. Um, so that was the point where things could have gone differently and better. Um, but yeah, feels bad. That's coming to the end. So yeah, I would say the main points after watching this. Um, I think there's definitely like a bunch of stuff it could be better with on the Regar. Definitely, like, you're a lot too passive, particularly in the early game, but a lot too passive in terms of your positioning and the team fights. Like, you're just, you're getting great value out of Lightning Bond in terms of map control and mercs and stuff, but you're not getting any value out of Lightning Bond in team fights. You're not getting any value really in Feral Lunge or in your basic attacks in team fights either, and Regar's pretty good at those. Uh, I mean, Jesus, you even took Hunger of the Wolf, and I don't think you used it, like, once, maybe once or twice. Like, you barely used that at all. Um, so I definitely look into that stuff, um, like just being more aggressive, like more appropriately aggressive. I think Regar is very easy, like I said, it's very easy to go too far and to just dive over much, get yourself caught out of position and, and then it goes horrible. But you're playing it so passively, I think too passively in this case, especially because it's, they're not too hard to play around. You know, you need to dodge the Li Ming orbs. But apart from dodging Leeming orbs, it's not too much of a threat. Uh, and then Sonya is like the one you need to worry about. Uh, Lunara is going to do this passive AoE damage, which is a pain, but should be able to play around that fairly okay. Um, so it's not the worst team to play aggressive into. It should be fairly reasonable to play aggressive into this. And, you know, the extra damage you could bring, the lockdown with the Earthbind Totem and stuff, pressure against Sonya in particular could add up to a lot. Um, the other things were, you know, using your totems to peel more for your team. Uh, making sure to get the healing totem down preemptively in a good spot. Uh, not putting it so far forward so that it gets killed immediately. And to throwing it, to put it down as your team are about to start taking damage. Um, so yeah, I think there's a few small things. I mean, this game, ultimately, there was like some pretty big throws. Like honestly, I think probably the biggest mistake was me, personally, on the Vala dying right there. That was really stupid and that really fucked us up. Um, but yeah, uh, that was probably the biggest mistake in the game. Um, but I mean, like all those little things that you could have done different could have added up to stuff, uh, being differently, uh, and going differently. Why are people giving out about the Johanna build? What's the Johanna build? Um, this is almost dead standard Johanna build. 
I don't normally take this. I think it's overkill. Um, but, I mean, it's pretty standard. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's pretty standard, Johanna. Um, yep. Pretty standard. So that was a bit rough. High Titan Killer. Purify Beam. Yeah. I spend fortitude. Yeah, I mean, um, they're pretty good talent builds overall. But yeah. Uh, interesting game. Alright, let's hop in and we'll see. Let's get another one up here. Let's get another one going up here. Uh, got a Sony game coming in. Okay, let's take a look at this. From that fin. Never stats. Uh, the stats don't matter much. You can get misled. <laughs> education, yeah. Education is like education, but better. <laughs> that fin. Oh god, no. Don't worry, dude. It's gonna be great. Like I said, it's being pretty much as critical as I could be in that one, seeing as uh, Funky was so confident. <laughs> Wait, what's what are you saying? What? Uh, Blessed Hammer does little damage. I like Blessed Hammer. I think it's good. Like, it does nice heavy damage. Like, yeah. If you, if you name your replay, nothing I can do. It's like, we'll point out all the things that you could do. Okay. Um, let's check out that fin. So this one is interesting. You're saying there's an Uther bot. And you're looking specifically for advice about solo laning with Sonya. And what you could have done differently on whether you play uh, too aggressive as well. So, yeah, he's saying there's an Uther bot in this game. Um, and then you think you play too aggressive with the Sonya, and then any tips for the solo lane. So we're gonna focus on, on that stuff. Again, a reminder to people, there's uh, the email link down there in the bottom uh, right-hand side of the screen. So you can send emails into there, nubkexmail gmail.com. Um, and I do like kind of just random, I pick them randomly. Uh, and, uh, yeah. Uh, send in Hero League if you can. I see one of the ones I've got in is unranked. So I'll always do the Hero League ones first, or Team League. Um, but yeah. <laughs> Nikasaru, Nub has acknowledged your Grandmaster status. And now you don't need to get your replays checked. Alright. <laughs> you say so. You say so. <laughs> Um, but yeah, Hero League stuff, um, and then we'll, like, be fairly try-hard about it. Yeah, pretty much everything is gonna be the old patch, seeing as the patch came out, like, last night. So, there's no, there aren't too many huge changes in the patch. I mean, let's see, for this game in particular. Let me turn the volume down until we get into game. It's so loud for me. Um, there's some slight diva tweaks, but I don't think anything that will affect it overly much. Apart from that and Alarak nerfs, but I mean, I don't think it's gonna make too much of a difference. All right, cool. Let me uh, turn down this volume and I can fix it. All right, cool. Uh, it's not going to 15%. Uh, that's fine, be quiet, but it's okay. Uh, and yeah, cool, let's go, let's do it. So we're looking at Sonya. Some solo lane Sonya. Uh, hang on, move that. So Uther leaves the game right at the start. That sucks, big time. Uh, we're going for block. Um, okay, so here's a mistake number one, straight up, at the start of the game. Uh, block. Um, block is probably Sonya's best level one talent, but the enemy team is a D.Va. D.Va attacks, was it, four times a second? Block is gonna do, like, literally nothing in this game. It's just gonna get shredded off. And besides that, they don't even have any anyone with, like, Alarak's basic attacks are pretty strong, but... Yeah, it's not that good. So you definitely want, don't want to be choosing block at level one. It's it's going to get no value. I mean, whenever they have a, a fast hitting it, uh, hero, you don't want to take block. So like Diva, Tracer, Zarya, Lucio, Genji, all the Overwatch ones, basically. <laughs> all the Overwatch ones. You don't want to take block against them. It's going to be a disaster. Um, so yeah, that's something that you could improve on for sure. All right, the second point would be that the solo lane is in top lane on Infernal Shrines, not in bottom. Uh, okay, so like, why why is why is top lane the solo lane? 
Uh, well, on this map, as you can see, like mid lane and bottom lane are much closer together. And you got this nice, pretty safe path to rotate between them. It's quick, it's short. Whereas if you kind of go from mid to top, it's quite far. Also a fairly safe path, but a lot longer of a distance as opposed to this, which is much quicker. Um, so that's why, it's one of the reasons why top lane is a solo lane, because it's the most isolated one. Also, um, you've got bruiser camps here, so they spawn later, and they're going to be taken more around the objectives. Whereas bottom lane, you've got the, the three siege camps, which you can fight over. So they're smaller, easier to take, quicker to take, and more relevant to the laning process. So you want basically four heroes in mid and bottom, and they're going to swap between the two lanes, clearing them out. They're going to fight, defend, and you know take the mercs and stuff like that and push them in. Maybe come up and gank, but it's going to be pretty isolated. But yes, yeah, bottom lane is not, not the solo lane. So yep. Point number one. Let's make sure we're... Got the camera right. There we go. Okay, camera's back in action. Cool. Stop that hero. Uh, Finn, you're expecting Alrock in the solo lane. Uh, against a dunk. Um, but yeah, I would not be taking block against their team here at all. Okay, this is going fine so far. I mean, I pri I'd be prioritizing uh, <laughs> Hook the Minion. I'd definitely be prioritizing oops, Whirlwind uh, in this lane. Uh, and Whirlwinding as much as possible to clear out the wave and push him in. He's going to run out of mana, right? So you can definitely use that to exploit him. But you want to be Whirlwinding through these minions to clear them out and to um, stack up your XP. All right, uh, to heal yourself. Second point as well is you do not want to use your Q, the Ancient Spear, on minions. Um, unless there's like no hero. What you want to do is you want to build up your fury just basic attacking the melee minions if needs be. Uh, then whirlwinding through them. You want to save the ancient spear for fighting Asmodan. Um, particularly when he starts doing laser you can just walk up and spear him in the face and then trade with him and, and win the trade. Um, you don't you don't want to use ancient spear in the minions because what's going to happen here you spear in and he goes okay laser in your face. It's going to waste his mana and it's not going to do too much to you but um, like against uh, more difficult lanes. That's definitely what you want to be doing. A okay, good pressure against him. Um, you don't need to overcommit to that. He's going to tap a well anyway. So he's got no mana left. <laughs> Why is this Utherbot so aggressive? Utherbot with no talent, by the way. Feels good. Right here, again, you can continue being aggressive. Particularly... Uh, Alright, so again, we've got this. You're, you're queuing into a minion, which is not good. Um, but... When you're in a solo lane that's so dominant like this, you want to be paying a lot of attention to the map. And this is where it's going to be difficult because they can gank you so easily through mid lane. Like, look, they can just walk in and they got this big, nice vent here. They can just walk so easily from there to this vent, run out and kill you. So it's pretty terrifying. You'd be so much safer up top. But anyway, um, let's presume you're in a safer solo lane. Uh, you want to be watching the enemies for rotations. And then you can push this in really hard and just ruin his life. Like, when the minions are walking forward, just basic attack them. Once they get far away enough from the towers, you go start whirlwinding in them. And just push, push, push this lane. You're going to out-sustain him. He doesn't have the mana to keep fighting. He's spamming his W all the time on Asmodan without level 4 talent. So he's going to run out of mana, like, straight away. He's also not going to get many stacks on Sieging Wrath against you, so that's great. But like, for example, right here, you need to be super careful because they could come down and gank you. Um, so that's definitely something to watch out for. They're actually, they've gone up top, so... Yeah, you're kind of safe. Okay, I think clearing out this wave is actually fine because you need the XP. Asmanan is pushing bottom. Alright, cool. So you're getting level 4. You want to be making your way up to top as quick as you can now. Interesting, they got the Alarak kill. Now, one thing I'm noticing is you haven't actually put your camera up there. Um, but right here, you would typically want to be the one who is up in that solo lane because you can clear out the, the thing so quickly interesting because I got an Asmodan splitting okay, and you don't like you're not gonna kill him like honestly he's gonna run out of mana before he runs out of health so you want to focus your goal is to burn down his mana by pushing the lane not to, to kill him by pushing him out but yeah I, I personally would have been going up to top there to secure the Punisher for your team and just taking the trade against Asmodan trying to match the Asmodan it's going to be difficult. Good news is your team killed Alarak, so they should be winning top anyway. But would be worth panning your camera up there. 
Willem the first. Whoa, it's Numbkex. Yay. Hey, man. Thought process was not going to let him push as he pushes more than Punisher probably would. He, I, I don't think he would push more than a Punisher. Uh, I think the Punisher would be better for you overall. Uh, and now your team is kind of losing top. Especially with a bot too. Probably just want to take your easy victories. I mean, send Kelpis or someone bottom to defend against him. Can be difficult because Elena... Oh god. New follower detected. What are the Elena bots? The first Punisher is very weak, yeah. Um, I personally would have would have taken that win though. Just just take the Punisher and go. Uh, especially with the Sonya. I'm send someone else. Someone else better wave clear to depush Asmodan if needs be. But hmm. Elena boss link porn. Great. <laughs> hey, good thing that they can only post links if they're a subscriber. Feels good, man. But you can see, like you're holding your own against Asmodan. It's gone okay, but your team have are gonna lose this Punisher with the bot. But oh well. Again, stuff does become quite difficult while you've got a bot. Alright, what talents have we gone for, by the way? Okay, we've gone for Hurricane. Uh, I mean, so Hurricane will remove mouth roots, and that's literally it in this game. And slow some Johanna Q. I don't see Hurricane getting much value. Poison Spear. I mean, Hurricane's okay. Um, you'd probably be better off with focus attacks here to pressure stuff out more in the fights. I mean, try burst down Alarak, for example, when he goes in. That would be pretty useful. Hurricane's okay. It might be a bit overrated, unfortunately. The cooldown for more whirlwinds. Yeah, that's true, but... I mean... I feel like, like the sort of typical build is Poison Spear into focus attacks now with the current meta. Uh, it would be very nice against Alarak. We'll see how this works. You see, the problem with Whirlwind here in this game is that Johanna will interrupt it like all the time with her con uh, Condemn. <laughs> so it's going to be kind of tough to get that stuff off. Um, so we'll see. We'll see how it works. Uh, I mean, you haven't gotten to team fights yet, so it's not been too relevant. We'll comment more on it when we get there. Uh, Tutok says, hi, I'm new to this game. Any recommendations? Uh, in terms of, what you mean? Like, in terms of heroes or stuff to watch or... Uh. Yeah, that's nice. There's good plans from the mouth. Alright, it's pretty good positioning there. I think you did a decent job there. I mean, focus attacks have been a bit more useful, but... We'll make do with the town build that we have. You guys are, you know, you're still doing pretty good in terms of XP. I mean, you're ahead in terms of XP, which is great, especially with a bot. This is going really, really well. Um, much better than you would normally expect it to go with a bot. So that is definitely, definitely good news. Good pressure against the Asmodan as well. It hasn't been too much to say like in terms of the soul lane here because it's a soul lane that Sonya so easily wins. It's like Asmodan just doesn't do much. He, 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 he never kill you. He doesn't do enough damage to kill you. Yeah, this is interesting. They're almost definitely uh, doing that there. Now, you don't want to go in there without your allies to back up. And I'd say you don't want to go in here uh, even more so because you have a bot. So a risky play like invading the enemy team is probably something you don't want to do with a bot. I mean, he's even out of mana, and Kelf is out of mana as well. So that's definitely something you want to you want to look at your team. Make sure you have your team's backup. It was very obvious that they were doing this. You need to ping it. You need to make sure your team is going with you before you invade. Like right there, you went and invaded alone, and it, it went. You know, it could have gone pretty badly. Um, you got out okay. Look, you guys had level ten before they did. Um, but yeah, I very much caution against doing aggressive plays like that when you have a bot. You're just kind of hoping, really, that they return. <laughs> Alright, D.Va just killed two of your team members. There's Falling Sword to keep whoever it was in chat happy. So you're looking for that. And yeah, right here, you need to run away at this point as well. The second that you lost two team members, you lost the Punisher. Alright, without being... Uh, like, unless you were at something like 36 out of 40. But, um, yeah. Yeah, everyone can send in a replay. Everyone can send in a replay. But, yeah, the second you lose two team members, you're, you're basically going to lose um, this Punisher. 
Your teammates are getting real tilted about having a bot. <laughs> okay, yeah, you've definitely gone too far forwards here. And you're gonna go down, yeah. You're just, you're way too far forwards in order to wave clear. Ideally at this point, you can see the map, looking at the minimap, stuff has gone kind of wrong here. So as soon as you see that you're gonna lose this Punisher, what you should have done, right, was Hearthstone out and go up top lane. Take over the top lane, and then let the Vala come down bottom. So Sonya's not gonna be much use fighting against the Punisher compared to a Vala. Vala does more damage, Vala's ranged, she'll be able to put, uh, poke that Punisher down much more quickly and depush the waves and fight more effectively against the enemy team when you got a Punisher there. And Sony would be better spent being in the top lane soloing that one. So, you know, st you, you really, at, at the point where you're kind of driven off, you went really deep into the lane to, to wave clear. Luckily, the, like, it's obviously not the highest level of play, so they focus on taking the Punisher. What they should have done instead, they just go, oh, Sonya, Sonya, like, you were, you were, like, way out here in the lane wave clearing. They just go, okay, cool, free Sonya kill, run down, kill you, go, all right, well, Sonya's dead, we're five man. We can just take the Punisher now for free anyway, because Sonya's dead. Um, and we got a free kill on top of it. Great. And then they go kill the Punisher and awesome, you're dead. So you went too far forwards to wave clear. You didn't get punished because um, play's not high enough level. But really, you wouldn't want to do that. You want to be backing off and going up probably uh, with Sonya to the top lane to soak and, and do that stuff instead as a, a strongest solo laner for your team. Uh, where's the Sonya button? Oh, I can't switch to your vision because you're, you're dead. Let's look at, uh, let's look at Kelpis <laughs> until you come back alive. <clears throat> Can you get mods to add a uh, replay command? Yep, I'll, I'll try to work out that sort of stuff. It's awkward because it's not uh, my channel here, so. We can switch back to Sonya properly. All right, there we go, great. What's the difference between ADC and specialists? Specialists are normally, um, they're kind of weird in, in terms. Specialists are the heroes who don't really fit into other cate like, categorizations. The Punisher jumps on you instantly dies. <laughs> Feels good. Now you guys are definitely significantly further behind than you were before. You're down a talent tier, which sucks. Down two forts, which really sucks. Um, so your map control is a lot weaker and you still have a bot. So this is pretty rough. Okay. Yeah, honestly, right here, like, you're very much on the back foot, so I like that you're playing so defensive. This is a really tough position to be in, where you are substantially behind and you've got a bot. So, I mean, you're really just relying... At this point, you're kind of going, okay, damage control. We just want to lose the game as slowly as possible. I mean, you've probably been saying this, or should be saying this from minute one, is you want to lose this game as slowly as possible until uh, Uther reconnects. And if he doesn't, you know, we're going to lose. This is the way it is. Hello puppy, hello Winston. Puppy's going out in the rain, Jack. Go to the toilet. Puppy Winston. Okay, that Miss Spear got yourself killed. That's pretty rough. You probably would have died anyway. I wasn't watching that fight. I got distracted by the puppy. Feels bad. But yeah, um, need to say, uh, why are... Yeah, no one has Uther. It's raining, lucky bastard. <laughs> but yeah, at this point, we'll hit the speed up button. Um, I'm focusing on that. But obviously, like you guys are picking a fight without the healer there, which is just a mistake. And down in levels as well, so that's kind of a disaster. Lost another fort. This is going pretty bad here. And we've kind of reached the point in the game now where it's kind of going into end game, and you have been losing. It, it's really just waiting for him to reconnect. Uh, and if not, you're just gonna lose, basically. You have a good team fighting comp, that is true. Okay. This could get interesting, so hang on. Let's uh, get the camera back proper. Alright, starting on the shrine, it's probably not gonna work. You're down to talent here. If they invade, they're just gonna kill you. This is not really where you wanna be. Okay, Diva just about survives. You can see here problem with the whirlwind. You're just getting silence and CC. 
like right there attempting to fight on the shrines not the best idea you guys got wrecked i mean it's just you shouldn't really have been going in there you've got a bot you're down a talent here very easy for the enemy team to push in and just to wreck you and you can see like a bit of the they've got a pretty decent comp against the sonya whirlwind build as well so you've you've built too much into whirlwind because you have the alarak silences you've got the uh johanna stuns there's just so much stuff to interrupt you I would say that was one thing you could have changed. I definitely would have gone for focus attacks. I definitely would have gone for mystical spear. And just try to burn down and burst people more than has been going on. And just gotten a few more kills. Divine shield out of nowhere. Should have committed to killing that Alarak right there. And used his 16 talent to survive a counter engage. Okay, this is really good now. I like that as well, splitting the focus over here because you know that the mouth kill is guaranteed. It's a good iron skin from Johanna, lucky on the timing for her, and she will survive. Tanking these towers is a little bit crazy. You guys just lost the bottom keep because of that. Alright, nice kill. Yeah, even without a bot, it's hard to go. And a talent tier dame, that's for sure. Alright, at that point, I mean, you guys want a team fight, and you can see the enemy team is making some mistakes. So if that can happen again, like if they over engage again, that's definitely something that you could take advantage of. But you are very much reliant on them making making a lot of mistakes for this to work. You played a game with Danatan. Did you, Funky? How did that happen? Okay, nice. This is a kill for you guys as well. Alright, now at this point, you guys are very much back in the game. Very much back in the game. This should be another kill as well. That Vala needs to run away, and Alarak should really kill that Vala. <laughs> Alright, so right there, enemy team is making a lot of very big mistakes. This is very good. At this point, I would not be committing to uh, destroying this fort. Um, I think you need to make sure your team is healed up and ready to fight over this shrine. And to take this shrine or like be ready to do like push out the lanes and be aggressive on the shrine uh, during these death timers, right? The death timers are still gonna be going when the shrine is open, so this is your chance to win a punisher and get a good push on. You've pushed in too far uh, for far forwards here. Uther's not dead, that's weird. But yeah, you pushed in too much. Like you're getting a lot too greedy for that fort. With only three of you there, and Kelthus dies because of it. Now this is really bad. Definitely you did not want to do that. You wanted to back off, heal up, move in as five, outnumber the enemy team, and then actually take a shrine for yourselves. Taking the shrine, it buys you so much more time. Ah, their Alarak had disconnected too. That's how you were coming back into it. It buys you so much more time because that's one of the that's a win condition for the enemy team. That's a punisher down through the bot lane where you've got no keep. Like they'll win if they get it. So you need to stop them from getting it. It buys you loads of time. The next punish should be going on one of your keeps. So yeah, Uther might be coming back in. Alright, this is actually fantastic. This is working out way too well for you. So much better than it really ought to. Alright, nice one. Good aggression and commitment to that, yeah. <laughs> the whirlwind build works out when they're missing half of their team. Feels good. Oh, Vala misses the stun. Feels pretty bad. Okay, good ping on the Uther as well. Get him back. You don't need to escort him. You can just run away. And he will follow you. What are my thoughts on the Alarak changes? I think they're, they're pretty reasonable. Alarak is a very annoying hero to play against. Um, yeah, I like that they focus it a bit more on landing like the big combos and stuff. I mean, it's still kind of snowball-y, still kind of gimmicky. I don't particularly like the hero, but it's alright. Alright, cool. Now this is nice for you guys. Getting this Punisher is a huge deal. Your team has respawned as well. Taking this camp is fine. Now you're going to be able to play really aggressive as Sonya. So this is great. The enemy team has made a lot of mistakes. A lot of mistakes. They had their Alarak disconnect for a good while. And you got... That's basically when you had your comeback was when Alarak disconnected. <laughs> so this is great. Alright, now let's really get into this and see what we can do here in this late game fight. Alright, the D.Va mech. Nice kill on D.Va, that's huge. 
walking into the outer counter strike interesting so you guys should win the game with this you guys should win the game with this one all right you don't want to worry about those towers you want to keep diving in with this punisher You guys can totally go core here. All right, kill this keep as quick as you can. Now you're not gonna have the Punisher left for the core, but they're gonna have two dead heroes for 30 seconds. You wanna focus on taking out this core. Yep, this should be this should be game. This is huge. Good focus onto the mouth. I like it. All right, nice one. Very interesting game here at the end. <laughs> Didn't expect you guys to win it after that early game. But uh, the Alarak disconnect was the thing that you needed. He got killed. Got you guys back in the game. Got a few fights with them down a couple of heroes. And snowballed it into the lead. That's a pretty big deal. But yeah. So I was wrong when I said your only hope is to wait for your Uther to reconnect. Your hope is to wait for Uther to reconnect and or for... Um, <laughs> For when the enemy team is to have a DC as well. That also works. Very lucky. Very lucky. Okay. In terms of the Sonya play, uh, I don't think you were playing too aggressive. I actually felt like the Sonya play was pretty good. I think the main thing for the Sonya was the solo lane stuff. Is actually go to the right solo lane. Um, pick appropriate talents for... The enemy composition, like don't be taking block against D.Va, that sort of stuff. Uh, and then save your spear for fighting the enemy team member. Don't be using your spear against the minions to stack up fury. You can stack that up with basic attacks. You need the spear to actually fight heroes. It went fine because you're against Asmodan, so it's a super easy solo lane. Um, but like if you're against a tougher solo lane opponent that's playing well, you're going to need to be using that spear to actually uh, fight the heroes, so that's that's quite important. Okay, um, gonna do a raffle to get the next replay. Uh, okay, number two. This one is from uh, Aaron Knutson. Storm replay. I thought you'd like to see this. Okay, cool. All right. Never Niku's replay. Sorry, Niku. You'll have to survive. Whoops, I opened Photoshop by act. How did I open Photoshop? That's not good. Um. Okay, hang on. So, Aaron's replay is... Where's it gone? Um... <clears throat> okay, got it. It didn't rename for some reason. There we go. I was like, where's it gone? It didn't it didn't rename. Thanks for all the follows, guys. Too many to keep up with, I'm afraid, but I do appreciate it. And welcome to Zola. We're gonna be streaming loads of heroes on this channel moving forwards. So if you like Heroes of the Storm, this is a, a good place to be. Uh, I'm going to be streaming from, I'm going to be doing Mondays, Tuesdays, Wednesdays, and Thursdays uh, from now on. Um, so yeah, loads, loads of uh, stuff. I'm also going to be coaching. I think hopefully from next week, Adam, Adam Hoek, who was streaming before me today, if you caught that. Um, I should be uh, coaching him next Monday during his stream for some of it uh, as a new player to the game. So it could work pretty well. Full Heroes channel, PogChamp, yeah. Yeah, I'm going to be doing Mondays on Zola, so it'll be four days a week for me. So Mondays will probably be kind of like uh, new player focused streams, kind of like uh, coaching some new players and I dropped some oh, fuck. And maybe like viewer games with more more newbie educational focused viewer games. Then the Tuesdays will be role focused, so I'll take like Warriors and I'll go into to Hero League and, and focus mostly on the Warriors, stuff like that. Uh, Aaron, you need to let me know what hero you're playing here. Uh -huh. New follower it just says, detected. I thought you'd like to see this, but I don't know who you are. Oh, you're probably Zeratul. Aaron. Ha. Ah. 
But yes, if you guys are sending replays in, do make sure you let me know your hero name, because oftentimes someone's actual name isn't their game name, and that can get uh, kind of messy kind of quick. Looks like we got camera lock enabled here. Let me just check. Which one? Number five. Okay, maybe not. Maybe not. There we go. We should have the camera set up. All right, we can open the talent pane as well. Good stuff. <laughs> Monday's confirmed, TGN all over. TGN is great though. Alright, I don't think it's camera Wait, what is going on with this camera? Okay, here we go. It's not camera lock. Good, I like it. Gone for Vorpal Blade at 1, I like that too. Let's actually throw in a pause here, let's look at team comps. Let's talk about what you want to be doing as their tool in this game. So the enemy team, oh, bad comp. They've got Sonya, Solo Tank Sonya, then they've got Falstad, Vala, Oriel, and Azebo. They've got, this is like Zeratul's wet dream. They're so squishy. This is great. In fact, they're all squishy. Even Sonya before level 16, super squishy as well. So you're going to be able to absolutely wreak havoc. Um, lots of squishy targets for you to assassinate in, in team fights. Uh, with Vorpal Blade as well, you're going to be really good against Vala and Falstad because you can follow them after they use their dashes. Well, I suppose she's got Caltrops, so <laughs> five second cooldown on that later in the game. Hype. But yeah, you're going to be able to, to play around this and bully them loads later in the game. You even have the option to like VP several of these guys because they're all ranged damage. They're going to be very clumped up. You can VP them, even assassinate the Sonya with your team. Uh, this could work out great. Your team, you've got Raynor, Regar, Varian, and Tyrael. Not a very good comp either, but we'll see. It looks like it's probably going to be Twin Blades Varian as well. Not actually necessarily the worst thing in the world in this game. He'll have a Tyrael to support him, and he'll be able to just kill the Sonya. So very likely, I mean, looking at your comp here, that's very likely gonna be the game plan. Uh, once you've hit level 10 is VP the back line, kill the Sonya, right? Just dive her, Tyrael dives her, Raynor runs up, starts shooting from the back line. Like he can't get to their back line because he's Raynor. Varian goes in with Twin Blades, starts whacking the Sonya. You VP them, you kill the Sonya. And then Sonya dies, they're super squishy. Your team can just roll over them and win. That's probably the game plan. Um, so yeah, I mean, you guys don't have a good solo laner, um, whereas they've got Fawcett, Sonya, so that's going to be tough. The lanes will be tough, but the team fight should be really good. So yeah, we shall see how it goes. We'll see how it goes. This is, is going to be kind of crazy. I'd imagine this is something like silver play, uh, judging from the comps, or maybe even bronze, I don't know. It's a lot of fairly dodgy picks. Getting hit by Sonya Q is definitely something you never want to do. Sony's just gonna eat all the damage for days. Okay, gonna use Warple Blade to follow her. Um, alright. Kind of messy there. But hey, that's ultimately a winning trade for you guys. Could have been played a bit better uh, in terms of like kind of kiting her around or body blocking her more, right? This is something you can do on Zeratul, uh, on Zeratul is actually physically get behind a hero and stop them from running away because you're physically blocking them. So you could have. Uh, that's definitely something you could have done. Alright, we're coming back up to top. Now we've got Sonya up here and Falstad. This will actually be pretty tough lane here. This Falstad is super low. Alright, nice. You want to throw your W quicker? Alright, cool. But you've driven them back. At this point, you're definitely open to roaming away, probably. Because their teammates are both kind of low. Alternatively, you could also at this point kind of stop and go, Hmm, they're playing pretty badly. There's just pretty low levels of, of play. We can exploit this quite a lot, but yeah, body blocking Sonya during Whirlwind, absolutely, yeah. Alright, you want to kill this Sonya. Okay, cool. Rip Raynor. That was unfortunate that Raynor died. But yeah, at least we got the kill. At this point, I probably wouldn't be... Hmm, I suppose Hearthstoning is not the worst. You do have a well that you could tap. And actually soak XP up to 4. But this will be alright. This will be alright. Whoops. I moved the thing. New. Okay, we're coming back. Why is your camera not moved? This is weird. Okay, it's back now. So you're clearly using the mini-map to move. Correct me if I'm wrong. I don't use the mini-map to, to move at all. But... Um, <laughs> is that with right-click enabled on the minimap? 
it's probably that is actually this is a small tip that I've actually probably never covered before. But you want to disable right click on the mini map. The mini map is relatively large. It's going to be very easy. For example, right here, it could be very easy to right click somewhere on the mini map instead of right clicking behind the heroes. You want to right click through mini map. Yeah. So it looks like you're using the mini map. I'm, I was getting really confused by the camera stuff. Um, yeah, you want it right. You can still left click mini map. That's fine. And you can use that to, to pan around the mini map and take looks at things and then, you know, left click and then right click to move. But you don't want to have, you don't want to right click on the mini map ever. It's really bad. It's going to fuck you up so badly. You can turn it off in the settings. So it looks very much to me like that is something you've got turned on. Um, it's turned on by default and it's awful. It sucks. It will ruin your team fights. So turn that off as quick as you can. Okay. Hmm. I do like the focus on the false dead. One thing I would say, right, is that you need to be throwing out your W, your singularity spike earlier in the fight, all right? You need to use that earlier in the fight. The singularity spike, while it's on them, will slow them down, right? Well, I mean, when it explodes, it, it's a slow, it's a big slow, 40% for three seconds. You need to get that slow off quickly, right? Because it lets you stay on top of someone. You need to, okay, you missed it there. All right, you got the kill, that's good. But you absolutely need to be throwing the singularity spike out earlier. You're, you're saving it until the end of your combo. You're doing your other stuff first, which means that these heroes are just running away from you. So that's definitely something you want to use. Yeah, this is probably bronze, judging from all the bills. Like, we've got Twinblade Varian. Um, we've got Bribe Falstad with Hammer Gains. We've got Caltrops with Puncturing Arrow Bala. It's kind of crazy. New that's a good kill. You want to be detected. blinking away. Okay, good. I love that all these fights have been going on, by the way, and no one's actually activated the shrines. <laughs> Alright, you also need to mount up, okay? You need to mount up as well. You hit that mount button. You're very slow getting around this the, the place here. There's no you're still on your stealth still works when you're on your mount. So you wanna be using that. Okay, I like your flank position here. Yeah, killing this Oriel is great. Okay, rip. That feels bad. Your team is very split. So again, this is, I don't think, your idea there was actually the right idea. Unfortunately, this is low level play. So this is kind of rough. Your teammates are over killing, uh, killing the, the monsters on the shrine when there's a bunch of, like a couple of very easy kills there. Uh, and they let the two of you die because they're too busy focusing on that. Very important. For the most part, you want to focus, you usually want to focus on killing heroes before you do the shrine. Because, I mean, this is the perfect example of a situation. Your team focuses on doing the shrines. While well, two people are dead, now there's three people dead. Make that probably four. There's four people dead, and there's no way to take the shrines. Like, sure, you got ten monsters, but that's useless. Because you lost a bunch of heroes. It's it's over. It's lost. Uh, make that five heroes dead. <laughs> hey, at least he's going to wave clear this quicker, right? But yeah, this is probably bronze. Um, but yeah, it's very important... You, I think you did the right thing there. The Varian did the right thing. Okay, look, this Oriel's out of position. We can dive on her, we can kill her. Unfortunately, your teammates didn't follow up. Um, you probably want to ping it more aggressively. Uh, or else... Um, you, uh, you know, if this is bronze or something, you need to be very aware and not overcommit. Oh my god. Not overcommit to plays like that, which would normally be the, the better plays. Like, if you're watching hero streamers or YouTube videos and stuff like that, you'll see people making those plays and it's the right thing, what you did. But that presumes that your teammates are able to follow up, which apparently in this they're not, so it's not too good. Okay, now this defense was kind of a mess. Varian is off doing um, a camp down bottom, so it's, it's kind of a mess. You want to be blinking out here. That hurts. You lost the fort. Hopefully Varian should get an okay counter push, so we'll see how it goes, but yeah. Um, it's one of the awkward things about your comp is that, you know, Rainer is so weak early game and he doesn't bring any Shrine Clear as opposed to a Vala who does bring some. Vala's gone for the maximum mana spend build. Seems good. I mean, she's gonna have her juice cooldown for Vault, but will she ever have the mana to actually use it? Okay, again, here, 
you definitely you want to be using that w earlier you need to use this earlier and you can use that to teleport in that's your engage with seeker in the dark you throw out the singularity spike then you can teleport in again this takes an extra half a second to explode now you really want to do this use that movement speed and then exploit the slow you're using singularity spike at the end um you want to be using it earlier on and then use warple to chase if they escape so you want to use singularity spike to engage Use Vorpal to chase, and then use Blink to escape, usually. I mean, you can mix it up, obviously, but that's, generally speaking, what you want to do. You don't want to use, um, you don't want, like, Blink to engage, and then Vorpal to follow, and Singularity to try to finish them off at the end. It's definitely, you need to be careful what you're doing here. Now, this is really awkward, because you guys are down level 10. So, at this point, again, you want to play very passive, soak all the waves. This is good to take the Merc Camp. I like that you're mounting up. This is good. Someone needs to soak bottom lane. Bottom lane is a big problem. They got lots of heroes down there. You need someone there to defend. But you need to... It's very important that you have one person as much as is possible on each of the lanes to get all of the XP, to get to level 10. There's no way you can win a fight. There's no way you can win a shrine until you have level 10 as well. Again, right here, you really don't want to do anything crazy here because it's just going to go badly for you. You're going to die. So you were just goal right here, just chill out, stay cool, get all the XP, get level 10, then fight them on the shrine with level 10. Not not before that. Not before that. It'd be a disaster if it was before that. Okay. It's actually good damage on Naz. That was well played. Regard does go down. I mean, he maybe could have got your damage out quicker, but it was good to spot that he was overextended and isolated, and then to punish him for that. You want to be tapping your well here. Okay, never mind. Varian went in alone and died. Hmm. You probably still want to tap a well. You want to de-push this. Okay, right here. We're coming in to fight this. This is a really bad idea. This is a really bad idea. So, if you look at what's happening here, I mean, look at this. Like, you've got... A big push in on your keep walls here. You've got a siege camp pushing on your fort here. You even have a big wave of minions down here. You've got four enemy heroes over here. You've got Rainer who's relatively low on health and you're kind of on half health. At the very least tap the well before trying something like this. But this is kind of a nuts engage. This is kind of mental. This is kind of crazy. You're going in 3v4, you're probably going to lose this fight, and you're going to lose a lot of map pressure elsewhere. Maybe if you can blow up someone squishy on the back. Maybe with VP. Okay, great. We killed the Oriel, but T Tyriel died, and you're going to die as well. Raynor is probably going to die too. Okay, he's going to live just a bit. Well, Vala's on the chase. She might get herself killed. Okay, no, she stopped. Good for Vala. Alright, so one hero killed, lost two. It pretty much went as expected. You could have done that fight a bit differently. Ah. Shadow Assault. Yeah, this is definitely Bloodlust. <laughs> Alright, and Judgment as well. Oh boy. Oh boy. Yeah, this is definitely Bronze. So, Void Prison is way better. And yeah, this is where it gets awkward. All the stuff I said at the start of the game about how you can play with vo uh, VP, Void Prison... You've gone for Shadow Assault instead, so that's not going to work. I mean, Bloodlust is going to get nice synergy with all this stuff, but Shadow Assault is terrible. This is the worst heroic in the game. This really, really sucks. It really sucks. Your attacks cause you to charge at enemies. It's like, you've got... You've got Seeker in the Dark. You've got Vorpal Blade. You've got Blink. It's like, what more do you need in terms of gap closing? You don't need... You don't need Shadow Assault. VP is so much better. But like in that fight there, if you had VP, you know, Tyrael dives in the back line, you VP them, you can blink past, get a couple of kills. You maybe could have won that, actually, because their position was pretty bad. Um, but yeah, without that, it's, it's not going to work out too well. But yeah, VP, you, you need to... Uh, for That's something you can improve upon with the Zera tool, is you need to get used to playing a VP. Shadow Assault is really shit. Like, 20% attack speed, it, it sucks. For four seconds, it, it's so bad. You don't need gap closers. You don't need 20% attack speed. It's just, it's just a terrible talent. So they need to, they need to change this. To be honest, they need to rework it. Anyway, um, switch back to your camera. Again, right here, this is really bad. You never ever want to fight a Punisher out in the open. It's just gonna destroy you. What you want to do is, 
let's say right here, okay, we've kind of progressed into this Punisher phase, but let's say going into the start of this, let's say they just got the mid Punisher and this is what your base looks like. You might want to put up a token defense over here, but you want to be fighting it very far back and for the most part, you're just going to be running away. Um, when you don't have a wall, this becomes super risky. Over here, when the Punisher is coming, what you want to do is you back up. You're over here. You're waiting over here. Especially with Tyrael. Tyrael can throw a Q behind him. Bait the Punisher over the wall. He can dodge it with the Q so the Punisher stone won't even hit him, which is great. Uh, and then you get the Punisher over here. The enemy team is stuck. They can't get through because you still have a gate and you still got the wall. You got towers all shooting the Punisher. So the Punisher dies quickly. The enemy team can't back it up. Everything is safe. Everything is nice. The wall is so important on Infernal Shrines. Last thing you want to do is fight them out here. Punisher stuns, the enemy team could just go kill you, you've got no towers to even protect you, it's a big disaster. Um, so never fight out here, you want to fight behind the walls, every single time. Every single time. New follower detected. At this point, it's probably worth tapping a well as well. <laughs> a well as well. But yeah, this is the sort of situation where tapping a well is probably a good idea, right? Tapping a regen well, it takes a few seconds for that, that health and mana regen to tick over. And coming into this situation, you're kind of expecting to take a fair bit of damage. It's a five-man team pushing in against three of you. It's a pretty scary situation. So you're fairly guaranteed to take damage. You can see that's exactly what happened. You did take a chunk of damage. So tapping that well earlier when the Punisher is about to come would have been pretty good. Disengage Hyperion. I mean, Shadow Assault pop for zero value. Bloodless pop for zero value. Here comes Tyrio. He you missed your Q. Okay, good kill. Hello, Winston. Going out again. Cool, cool, cool. New oh, no, follower I detected. I missed your death. Oh, what exactly baits a Punisher? Yeah, sure. So a Punisher gets baited over when it, it has vision of you. So you need to give it vision. Um, so let's say with, with Tyrael, for example, if we hop over to Tyrael for a second. Right, so Tyrael's got Elder One's Might and Smite. What you want to do is throw, let's say Tyrael stands right here. You want to throw Elder One's, like, let's say over here, behind you. You want to throw Smite over the wall to hit the Punisher. And then when it jumps, you press Q immediately. So you teleport... The, the jump lands here, the stun misses you, and then the Punisher runs after you get shot by all the towers and you just kite it around and, and it's nice. That's basically what you what you want to be doing. Alright, let's get back to the Zara tool over here. Uh try to give a dune. Mending strikes is better overall. Particularly in this game. <laughs> Particularly seeing as you've got Bloodlust and Shadow Assault, you definitely want to get mending strikes. Um, and it's the better one overall with this build, with the combo slash, uh, and then with Sentence to Death at 16. So I, I'd recommend playing with Mending Strikes. I mean, Shroud of a Dune's okay, but Mending Strikes is a bit better. Uh, yeah, I mean, your variant is playing really bad, so yeah, that's fair. The variant is not making your life any easier in this game, that's for sure. Okay. Coming into the shrine phase. You guys are down two levels, not down a talent tier yet. You've got all of your heroes alive, you've got all of your ults available. This could be a good time to pick a fight before they get 16. Um, like just gank him on this Punisher, just, you know, dive someone. Like pick a target with your team, dive them with judgment, pop all of your ults and try to blow them up. You've got pretty good dive with Bloodlust, you've got really good kill pressure. Um, so you're way behind your team here again, no mount used. Okay, good, that's a couple of kills. Excellent stuff. All right, it's working out. This is what we're looking for. Definitely don't want to dive under the turret. All right, nice, four kills for your team. Hey, hey, there you go. Nice. <laughs> so that's basically what we're kind of saying could work, right? Their comp is really bad. Your comp is better. I don't agree with some of the talent picks, but at least you do have some sort of gameplay there. What you could have done differently was, obviously you were very late to that fight. You should have been there sooner with your team. I'm ready to follow up, so that's something that you want to do differently. Um, but yeah, that was the right idea for your team. It's just force a fight really hard with the crazy dive and team fighting heroics that you have. 
Um, they don't have any disengage because they don't have Mighty Gust, so easy. Um, and yeah, just dive them and, and try kill them with that stuff before they go. Um, again, you've got an awkward situation here where you don't have any good wave clear hero to actually deal with that push in top. We're going to send the Tyrael. We really would want the Tyrael with you. Probably should send the Varian. I mean, Varian's just gone in and he's like almost instantly dead. Alright, nice kill. <laughs> Shadow Assault. Okay, cool. Regar is coming in. Alright, you want to blink away for safety. Ooh, the Jukes. I like it. I like it. But yeah, you wanted to realistically probably send Varian back to clear out the wave and push top and then have Tyrael with you. You definitely want the Tyrael with you for this fight. But yeah, especially because the Varian seems pretty bad. You really do want to keep him on split pushing duty. This is good. You want to be following in on this. Alright, so again... A bit slow following in there. Alright, Tyrael gets the kill. You got the kill anyway. But yeah, you definitely want to be ready and to go in and follow in that Tyrael a bit quicker. Hmm. Void Prison? Void Prison is never useless. Any level of play. At the end of the day, it's like 5 seconds? Is it 5 or 4 seconds? I don't even know what it is off the top of my head. I just know the timing. Yeah, I thought it's 5 seconds. It's a 5... You're removing heroes from the fight for 5 seconds. Which is super useful. So, yeah, that's a pretty big deal. Yeah, it's not six. Uh, that would be way too long. Well, puppy, puppy's outside and he's sad. But yeah, 17 to 17. This is great. You guys still have all of your keeps. This is great. So there's still plenty to play for here. Alright, nice kill there. I was gonna say, you wanna kill him. Again, I feel like you're being very flippant as well with your kind of use of your, your gap closing abilities. You're using Shadow Assault as a crutch. So I can definitely foresee this becoming quite a problem when you do switch over to VP. You're going to need to rethink and be more careful with how you use all of your gap closers, right? Because you're kind of, you're using them a bit flippantly and then using Shadow Assault to make up for that. So you're going to have to be a lot more safe with how you do it. For example, right here, you should have been in on that Vala much quicker with your W. Ah, uh, will expire. But yeah, you're gonna have to be super safe with that. You're gonna have to be super safe. Uh, you're gonna need to practice when you switch over to VP. Because you're, you're blinking in and you're using Shadow Assault to chase, so that's gonna take a lot of time to get used to. Yeah, if I miss some of the questions in the chat, I do apologize. There's there's too many questions to keep up with. That's a very nice push for your team. You guys definitely want to secure this Punisher. Um, in fact, right here, you've got so many of the enemy team members dead. You could have one or two people even push down this fort. If you can destroy the fort, it's a Punisher on keep. Destroying a keep is fantastic. You guys will have level 20. There's even the potential that you guys could win the game off of this, right? So you want to try and make the most of it. Varian's actually stealing their Bruiser Camp. That's a very risky move. Very greedy move. And this might actually lose you guys the game. At this point right here, by the way, you want to be going to back Varian up. Because it's such a... Him taking that camp is such a bad idea. You want to be there to help mitigate it. It looks like Varian will die. Oh, he's surviving with like a sliver of HP. Okay, he's just about alive. I mean, you want to be over there and saving him. It's very important. Oh my god, this puppy's really sad. Can you guys hear that? Can you hear the puppy crying? He can hear me talking and he wants to come play. Okay, Varian lives. But again, that is something that you could have done differently there. You do not want to leave Varian alone. In the back right there. Okay, you need, you're gonna probably die, yeah. Without... Mending strikes would have kept you alive there. So it's a real pity you didn't take that. But yeah, you need to be... <laughs> I mean, you guys still won that fight. You guys can't hear the puppy? Oh, poor puppy. So kind of to sum up on that point there, I mean, Varian's gone out of position. The enemy team's respawned. They're going to find him there. It was very lucky that he didn't die. You guys, you had three of you. It's not just you, right? It's not just you. But like your whole team is a group. You need to cover the Varian while he's doing that. Um, and make sure that he escapes alive. Losing him would be really bad. Um, 
You guys won the fight overall, though, so you'll take that. What did you take at 20? Oh my god, what is this? Nerezine ne ne Fury. 30% life steal. The duration is increased by 50%. Oh god. Oh god. Oh. So you want to get VP and rewind. And mending strikes. And then you need to, to learn how to play around those things. But uh, rewind is huge. Rewind is huge. How do you give bits to this channel? Um, through cheering, I think. I actually, I don't know. The chat box? Uh, it should be, it's the same as every other partner channel, as far as I know. <laughs> and you can subscribe to, all that fun stuff. But, yeah. Uh, I mean, you're gonna have lots of life steal. <laughs> That's true. With Bloodlust and with this. But, yeah, I mean, you really do need to, to learn to play with, with VP and to play with Rewind. They're much more difficult to play with than this stuff, but they're just vastly more effective. He's got visitors. Oh, lucky puppy, he's got some visitors. I might have the puppy say hello at the end of the stream, guys. Say hello to the puppy at the end of the stream. Alright, you guys are still way ahead in this game, so... The only problem is, enemy team heading 20 soon. Only have one keep down. The Punisher is just top, so that's your easy win condition kind of gone. So, yeah. Zeratil is a high skill cap hero. Either learn how to do it right or pick someone easier. Uh, yeah, I mean, I should, it's not even... I mean, oftentimes picking easier talents is a good idea. Like, I'd say Cleanse, for example, is a, is a really good example, where Cleanse is so difficult to use that... It's kind of the last thing you want to focus on and worry about is cleansing people correctly. Okay, this is great. With that kill, I mean, you guys are you guys are laughing. Okay, false had just died to minions. <laughs> right. Bronze level place. Feels good. At this point, you guys are really happy. Nazebo, their team is fighting. This is great. Okay. At this point, you want to send... You're so far ahead. Like, this is a free win. You guys could just... You could run top lane and win the game right now. Um, you guys just won the game. Alternatively, do what Tyrael's doing and just push down. I mean, even just push through middle and end the game. But yeah, with if four dead heroes with respawn timers this long. I mean, you just, you just go core and you win, right? Um, so we'll see. Hopefully you guys don't lose now because you have this game won. <laughs> Super easy. Tyrael's going to get the other keep. Feels good. Hopefully Varian doesn't die or anything. Hello there. Hi Kevin, hello Kevin's friend. What do you get? Oh, they're for me? They're for you. Oh, thank you very much. Ah, oh, thank you. Kevin you want to put them down there? Yeah, I do. Or oh, maybe put them somewhere high the puppy can't and grab them. Yeah, thank you. Aww. <laughs> Alright, where are we? So we got the Punisher. Tyrael is, in the meantime, winning. Like, look at this, by the way. I, I'm just gonna pause the game. In fact, I won't even pause it. But, like, you guys are all fighting down here. You got this Punisher pushing in here. In the meantime, Tyrael is just solo winning the game. He's got the core to 669 hype uh, percent HP. He's just winning the game over here. <laughs> this is what I'm talking about. You guys could have just gone cores 5 and won it. I like that you've come to back him up. Nice. All right, good stuff. Yeah. It was great. Your teammates will eventually join over here. Varian did die in the meantime as well. I, I missed that. But yeah, this is interesting game. So, alright. Core's about to go down. To sum up the stuff that we saw in this game, um, I mean, you had a much better team comp than them. I think the, the main things for me watching the Zeratul play is it's just Shadow Assault, really. That's the main thing, is... You need to you need to learn to play with VP because VP is literally five. Like I'm not exaggerating, it is literally five times better than Shadow Assault, if not more. Like VP is probably the strongest heroic in the entire game. Shadow Assault is probably the worst heroic in the entire game. Like it 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 literally is that huge of a difference. Um, and then Rewind at twenty, right? Rewind at twenty is so good. It's insanely strong. Um, it just and it, that, that gives you so much mobility, right, as well. It gives you so much mobility because you've got, you have all the burst damage from your Q, your W. You've got the burst damage from Sentence to Death. You've got the extra damage uh, or the move speed and stuff from Seeker in the Dark. And Seeker in the Dark, the longer explosion time gives you more Sentence to Death damage. 
gives you more procs of combo slash. You get the gap closers of this. You get an extra blink charge. It's just, it's insane. So you need to you need to learn how to work with VP and you need to learn how to work with Rewind. I feel like that's it's gonna be a big adjustment period for you on Zeratul because you're you are you're actually using Shadow Assault relatively well, you know, for the talent that it is. But it's gonna take you a lot of time to get used to using your gap closers with Zeratul and not relying on Shadow Assault to make up for that. So when you switch to VP, that's gonna be a big adjustment phase. So I'd say maybe even take a game or two and like quick match to just practice um, playing with VP instead of Shadow Assault. Um, and yeah, like that, then once you do that, I think you'll see more stuff coming through in terms of the, the micro and the mechanics. Um, but like, you're not gonna be able to get away with things like, you know, blinking in, oh, they barrel rolled away. Um, okay, I can pop Shadow Assault and chase. You're gonna have to, 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 to change things up in terms of your play style. Um, and then I take Mending Strikes as well. It's just, it's just better with Combo Slash and all this stuff, because you, you do get a lot of basic attacks off with this particular build. So Mending Strikes is just a little bit better. Um, but certainly Mending I mean, absolutely with Shadow Assault, you should be taking Mending Strikes anyway. Um, but yeah, there, there are some of the smaller things I'd, I'd be looking on. Um, yeah, that's, I, I'd say, you know, there's, there's a lot of other things you could improve upon, of course, but that's the big thing for me watching this game is, okay, learn to play without Shadow Assault and to play with VP. Uh, and that will see your Zero Tool gameplay level up to the next tier. So yeah, there we go. I think that's enough to, to cover in that game. There's a lot of little other smaller things, but that's that's enough to focus on for this. And also, yeah, be using your W to engage as well. I mean, that ties into working with VP instead of Shadow Assault, but use the Singularity Spike Seeker in the Dark to engage. Uh, use Blink to disengage um, and, and work around that sort of stuff. Okay, we got... Uh, Bunch more replays come in here. We've got seven. Cool, cool, cool. All right, cool. Uh, seven. Generate. Ooh, number one. Most recent thing sent in, which is from Chris. A composition you wouldn't expect. Ooh, what shall it be? I wonder. Okay. Uh, comp you wouldn't expect. Okay. Um... So, no, Chris, you're gonna have to let me what hero. Let me know what hero you're actually playing. Uh, Christoph. Yeah, I don't know who. I don't know who you're playing. So let me know while we're loading up here. Uh, if you could send me an email, just reply to that email. Oh, potato is a potato soup two in the chat. Morales. Okay, that's cool. It's potato soup two. But yeah, guys, let me know in the email, um, like what hero you're playing, what your your hero name is, if not. And then what your Twitch name is as well. So I know who it is. is. <laughs> and if you can rename the replays too, like people have been mostly doing, that's that's handy as well. Otherwise it will replace my replays. Feels bad. Feels bad. Okay. So you're going to look at a Morales game. It should be pretty interesting. Oh yeah, that's a good point by Low and Glam as well. Um, the, the W, so with Zeratul, the Seeker in the Dark Taunt at level 7, when you can use your Singularity Spike to teleport over... Um, that will give you another proc of combo slash. So that can give you a bit of extra burst damage, which is pretty cool. Yeah. All right. I'll turn down the game sound when we get in here. And we'll go. So comp you wouldn't expect. Got a Varian. Morales, Zul'jin. A Gul'dan and a Zakara. Yeah, I definitely wouldn't expect this one. Triple backline rain, uh, damage, a Varian, and a Morales. Okay. Long game as well. Let's turn the sand down here. That's fine. All right, cool. Uh, and then boost the sand up here. All right. And Morales. All right, let's go. So, Morales Soul Gen is actually a really nice combo and can work really well on this map. Um, and. I mean, Morales is actually pretty good on this map in general. Uh, she can work pretty well. Um, they don't have too much dive for you to worry about, so that's good. I mean, they've got a bit, right? They've got a bit of dive, but they're the triple backline. They're very not divey heroes, so you're pretty safe as Morales, to be honest with you. Should be fairly okay. Cocoon is definitely something to watch out for. We'll see if he actually picks it or not. But apart from that, it's it's not too shabby. 
<coughs> Excuse me, team. Itchy nose. But yeah, you basically just want to, you know, keep uh, Zul'jin and uh, you want to keep your whole team healthy here as the Morales. Especially that Varian. And yeah, just keep going. You've turned off your heal here. Varian still very much needs a heal, so that's definitely something you want to keep going. Gone for Trauma Trigger. Uh, yeah, definitely watch out for that Varian. And your team are taking a lot of damage. You want to as well, this is quite important on Morales, is you can alt click on your mana to tell your team I'm low on mana. Very important on Morales in particular. For any support really, just be like, team, I've run out of mana, I can't actually heal you anymore. Like your, your team has take, took so much damage in this first minute here that you kind of really need to recall at this point. Um, and it should be just fine to recall as well. Like, it depends how well they actually play. But, <laughs> given that you've got Gul'dan, and if you look at their team, their team has got real shit wave clear. Your team has, Google, uh, has got a Gul'dan. So, realistically, there should be no way that they can actually push in and do structural damage. So, you should be completely free to recall and come back quite often in this lane uh, without the enemy team punishing your absence. Unless your team screws up really hard. So... That's definitely something that you can do, but yeah, you need to be getting out of there and come back. Bear in mind the Immortal will spawn in roughly a minute as well. I think it's 150, so you at least need to respawn and have uh, recall and have full mana for that phase. Um, I'd say going into this, it'd be pretty good if you recall now, come back to lane, spend about 20-30 seconds in lane, go with half mana into the Immortal phase, then maybe recall halfway through that, like as the Immortals go into transition, and then be back for the, the push then when the Immortal comes through. Uh, you guys should be well ahead in the Immortal race, so that's great for you. Um, so yeah, that's kind of the stuff that I'd be trying to do here. Uh, okay, we're like AFK. What's going on? What's going on? Okay, don't take so much damage. I don't have infinite mana. All right, well, I mean, there's a couple of things there. I mean, you never want to be AFK. You want to be trying to type as you're doing things. Here's a little tip in case you guys haven't seen my control uh, video. What you want to do there, back off a little bit, press Z to mount up, then shift, right click the healing fountain and shift, right click back into lane. The shift, right click buttons, queues up commands. So you'll automatically mount up, tap the well and walk back to lane. That will free you up to type as you're doing that. You never want to be standing still and typing uh, as much as possible. It's a, it's a pretty bad idea. Um, let me make sure I got the camera button right. Okay, cool. Um, so that is something that, that would be pretty important to do here. Um, but is it, you know, it's not a bad idea as well to tell your team, like, guys, watch out. Like, I'm burning through the mana. Um, but yeah, now we're in a really awkward spot. Okay, so I'm gonna, we're gonna pause the game as the Immortal spawns. To kind of illustrate this. Okay, but yeah, now, okay, look, boom. So Immortal has spawned. Alright, Immortal has spawned. Sorry, it actually spawns 130, not 150. Um, so definitely Hearthstoning there was... Super essential. But look, Immortals have spawned. You don't have a healing fountain, and you're probably not going to have it for this for these Immortals. And you're on, like, 20% mana. So, kind of screwed a bit. <laughs> you're kind of screwed here. Uh, the mana management not working out too well. Definitely Hearthstoning before this Immortal phase spawns is the correct thing. It's funny, I actually just, I just know when the Immortal spawns by the rhythm of the game from playing the map, like, a hundred times or whatever. Um, but yeah, it's actually 1.30, that's a particular time when it active uh, spawns, and then 15 seconds later it activates. So that's good to know for the first one. But yeah, like right here, like you just, you just not, you haven't taken part in this immortal phase, right? You just, you're not there. Okay, healing up Gul'dan, this is good. That, it swapped quite late there. Alright. You're doing a good job here, healing people up. Okay, prioritize healing the Varian. He's the one that's most likely to go deep here. Gul'dan can heal himself a good bit anyway. Okay, this is good. And you guys definitely want to... You guys want to race the Immortal whenever you can. So that worked out okay. The enemy team really ought to have punished your team a lot harder um, for that. Because, I mean, they were there without Morales, so they should have punished a lot harder. But hey, it worked out in the end. I think you, you, you played that pretty well for the most part. Li Ming left the game. Uh, Li Ming is CCing. 
Um, but yeah, uh, apart from like, <laughs> the whole having to Hearthstone was bad, but from the time you came back, at least you're healing the right people and stuff, so that's good. But yeah, you need to you need to time those Hearthstones better. Um, cause, look, if you're playing at a higher level of play, if you just miss that first Immortal phase, it's like, you're just gonna be super screwed. Like, your, your team is gonna be killed, or they're gonna lose the race, and eh, you're gonna start falling behind. It's not good. Um, that goes for any healer, pretty much. You wanna be able to time that Immortal right. Again, I like how, who, uh, who you're healing and how you're healing. It's nice. Yeah, you're healing really well. Like, I have to say, you're spreading it around really well. I mean, you leave the Gul'dan not quite on full HP. I mean, he just... He just, like, mana tapped unnecessarily there. But you leave Gul'dan not quite on full HP so that he can, you know, heal himself up with Life Drain. You leave Zul'jin not quite on full HP because he gets more attack speed. It's great. And then, um, yeah, you just keep the Varian fairly topped up as well. You don't need to keep him full, but keep him topped up enough to be the frontline aggressor. It's, it's really good. I like that. Um... It's a pity Varian didn't go for overpower, but I mean, it's not too bad actually not going for overpower when you got triple backline. Line small does work pretty well. Yeah, Mirage is pressing Q, but the important thing is that you're switching the Q around appropriately, depending on, on which target needs the healing more, so that's good. I like it. Okay, uh, let me check a look at the talents here. We went for automated block. That's not a good talent choice in this game. Again, they don't have much dive against you. Diva will just shred off block stacks. Be much better off with something else like Infuse Grenade would be really good here. You know, just you know, knock people away, keep your mana up. You know, it's 50 mana every time you hit a grenade. That's pretty good. That's, you know, almost 10% of your mana. Not quite, but almost. So that little bit of extra mana sustain would be much more useful than automated block. I mean, we can keep an eye on it down here in the bottom left. We'll see how much it actually gets proc'd. I wouldn't expect it gets proc'd very often. Bio shield is not super appealing either. Okay, there we go. I got hit a couple of times. Hype! Automatic block value! But for the most part, it's not going to get too much value, so I wouldn't wouldn't bother. If they've got something like a gray main, then yes. But against this team comp, probably not. You guys are way ahead now, by the way. Like, invading their bruisers is, is insane. Normally, this is something that you can never pull off. But hey, you're up two levels, basically. At this point, unfortunately your teammates have gone super deep. This is probably like silver or something, I don't know. But yeah, um, at this point I would say given that they're only respawning and that you have a little bit of mana, you probably want to rush the first immortal phase and hearthstone and time it so that you arrive back with full health after it does the half HP swap thing. Um, that's really the ideal timing there. I mean this is okay, uh, you probably get away with it. But it's not like the most efficient, but I think you're, you're better off heartstoning at least than never heartstoning at all. It's gold one. Wow, no way. Okay. That's kind of crazy. <laughs> I mean, I have to say, like, it's kind of all over the place for gold one. It's funny. I would have, I definitely would have guessed silver. But yeah, like, invading bruiser camps is pretty nuts. Okay. Uh, we went for irradiate then. Again, this is not a good, very good talent. Not a very good talent at all. Um, cleanse, obviously, is what you want to be going for. Generally speaking, it is difficult to use, but then Morales is relatively easy to play, so Cleanse is pretty usable. Um, I'd probably be going for Cleanse. I don't see Irradiate being that good. Uh, clear can work. Probably irradiate, honestly, is pretty much the last one I'd be going for here at all. Um, I can understand not taking Cleanse. Cleanse is nearly always the best talent at 7 for any healer. However, it is very difficult to use, so it's not necessary. This is probably a Stim Drone game. Yeah, Stim Drone. I like it. I like it. You reckon they don't have much CC to pick uh, to pick Cleanse? I mean, well, a new Barak is probably worth having Cleanse against just on his own. Um, but yeah, like, obviously D.Va doesn't really have any CC... Like, a little bit, but nothing too important. Oh, you're using the shift commands. Cool. Uh, Li Ming is back now, so this might change now. Uh, but may you guys are so far ahead that might have honestly snowballed too far and the Li Ming's disconnect for them to come back. Um, I mean, the Zebo doesn't have anything to cleanse. Lili, maybe Water Dragon slows. Um, you're not going to cleanse a wave of force. So, yeah, I mean, it's just a Nubarak, but a Nubarak is probably worth cleansing. 
Especially given that you got like a Zildjian and stuff. But anyway. Level 11 to level 8. Doesn't get too much more dominant than that. Keep walls gone down. Okay, good. Healing up the Varian. I like it. Okay, you've got good positioning as well. Alright, nice. Could have been worth throwing the... Yeah, okay. I didn't actually catch the grenade. I was going to say maybe throwing out the grenade to knock the uh, Nazebo back. Um, that could often work quite well with a Varian. But he died anyway. <laughs> Which is Sim Drone, Zildjian. Drubby says don't pick uh, Cleanse Amorales, really? I like, I like Cleanse Amorales. I mean, the only hero I wouldn't pick Cleanse on um, is uh, maybe, well, I'd never run solo support Lily, so I'd never really be picking Cleanse with her. Or then Uther, because Garden of Ancient Kings is better. But everyone else, Cleanse is, is the best talent, but it is hard to use. So I'd say don't, I wouldn't worry too much about Cleanse until maybe Diamond. But yeah, I would definitely be probably not picking a Radiate. I don't know, just a Damage Aura, it's fairly low. Um, and they're fairly ranged, so yeah, I don't know about that. I mean, Mule wouldn't have got any value yet either, so that's that's a thing. Anyway. You guys are very far ahead at this point. <clears throat> to be honest, there's rarely too much that happens on Battlefield of Eternity during the laning phase, like between immortal phases. It's just kind of like soak lanes, take merc camps, wait for immortal to spawn, and that's pretty much just what's happening here. Like, Clans would be pretty useful against the Water Dragon. But she shouldn't really have taken Water Dragon anyway, <laughs> because she's solo support Lily. And she's dead. Rip, Lily. Rip, Lily. What did we take at 13? Oops, I broke the camera. 13 went for intensive care. Yeah, I like this one actually quite a lot. Um, <clears throat> I mean, couples therapy can be good as well. I, again, like I said, I don't feel like you need it against this team. I mean, they don't have Cocoon as well, so easy. Happy days. Um, spell shield can be good as well. Could be worth it, maybe, against Leeming Orb build, but intensive care is just fine. You've got two heroes that can spend their life very quickly. Uh, or could help Varian be super aggressive, so I think it's a good, fine choice. I like it. Right here, coming into this fight. This would have been a pretty good position, right here, to Stim Drone him and then heal the Varian instead. That could have worked out well on any of plans off that Lightning Serpent. So that would have been a pretty good opportunity right there to actually stim, uh, stim Drone the Zildjian. Now he went and he died, unfortunately. But, I mean, Stim Drone would have worked quite nicely. You've actually Stim Drone <laughs> Gul'dan. Zagara dies. But the reason that that position right there would have been good for Stim Drone is that Varian was running away on really low health. They're committed to chasing and diving the Varian. Zul'jin was kind of getting a flank position. He's going to do a lot of damage. Stim Drone is 10 seconds as well. So, hey, you know what? 75% more damage with Stim Drone on Zul'jin as he's flanking. Cool, we'll just let Zul'jin go ham while they're chasing the Varian. Awesome stuff. I can heal the Varian up. We can turn it around then if needs be. That could have worked out pretty nicely. Uh, saving Stim Drone for Gul'dan, not so good. Misclick Stim Drone, yeah, okay, misclick. Um, honestly, it's probably... It's probably just worth saving. I mean, there's... None of the other heroes are really worth Stim Droning, to be honest with you. It's probably worth saving for Zul'jin. Like, unless it's super urgent. He's probably just gonna die. Um, yeah, that's not your fault, really. I mean, you ping for a retreat, you still kept going in. Rip him. Your death will be remembered. It's probably worth kiting them the other way as well. That's a small thing there, but I mean, just kite them further away from the Immortals so that Zul'jin has some time to race it down. But oh well. <clears throat> Not your fault. Not your fault, that one. That was definitely Gul'dan. That was the sort of situation where it might have been better off just letting him die and saving yourself. Because uh, he was playing so badly, but oh well. Oh well. Rip Gul'dan. I'm oh, sorry, I think the Immortals are actually swapped the other way. I always get confused with the color coding. 
So yeah, that's actually your one. Okay, never mind. It didn't really matter which way you went there because the immortal was the other way. Gotcha. Okay. Didn't matter. It was too far away for, for uh, Zildjian to get on it anyway. So, Ignore what I said. The colors confused me. You can see your red team, but the red immortal is actually the enemy team's immortal. Oh. Replay coloring. Feels good, man. Okay, I had the right idea with the grenade. Now, he didn't actually make it work there. Alright, that was actually very nicely done. Not over committing to get yourself stuck. Kind of hiding at the, the maximum range. That was well done. I like it. Alright, cool. Keeping this, this cooldown alive. Fui. Ouch. Plenty of pings going down in this game as well. I, um, I'm colorblind as well. Feels bad. Zoning more. Okay, you've lost your fort. I mean, you can. It's fine clearing this super aggressively. They've got a bunch of people down in bottom lane, so it's pretty safe. And you could even be potentially forcing a fight right there. That would have been a good spot to force a fight by your team. Obviously, not something you as Morales have any control over, right? But you could be ready there to follow up and to you know drop that stim drone aggressively. You saw they had what was it, Nubarak and someone else down in bottom lane. At least two heroes anyway were down bottom. The Immortal was just going to die to towers. It wasn't going to do anything else for minions on its on its travel paths. So you could just run past that Immortal and die with them. It, it's definitely something you can do. Uh, yeah, I think calling for retreat's a good idea. Equal talent tiers. You guys don't have Horrify. It's pretty risky. You don't have Maw either. Pretty risky to actually try force a fight on their bruisers. It's a little bit too crazy. One thing I would say, like Funky just said in the chat there, is maybe calm down a little bit on the pings. Doing a good job in terms of making the right pings and stuff. Maybe don't ping quite as much. Keep making those pings, but do half as many pings. Still communicates about the same thing. But yeah, I think and like Morales is a great hero to shot call on because there's not too much to do, honestly. So yeah, I'd definitely be healing up that Zagara. Again, um, Zul'jin's a hero that you can kind of leave on lower health and it's okay, because he gets more damage. Horrify was used for something, I think just to disengage or peel or something. So this is kind of gnarly, you're, you're down again Maw and Horrify, with nothing to show for it. So this is pretty awkward. You do have a talent tier advantage though, you've got Bruiser Camp pressuring top. So at this point you do want to like get a good start in this Immortal. Try to exploit that map position with the bruisers. And hey, if they fight you, happy days. You're gonna lose they're gonna lose their top keep. Oh, you're gonna hearthstone for mana. Okay. Luckily they sent like oh my god, they sent their whole team. Face pound for the enemy team. Look at that. How many here they just sent so many heroes to defend against their bruiser camp. And just gave you the entire immortal phase for free. Feels good for you. Okay. Quirrell Zul'jin. He is the most important hero for you. Alright, nice save on Zagara. Nice save on Zagara. That was very close. Poor Zul'jin. Never Stim Drone. Stim Drone variant. I, like, you need to... I Like, don't hold on to Stim Drone so long. I mean, just go for it. Just drop it on Zul'jin. Let him go ham. I think you're waiting for the perfect Stim Drone in this game. You're like, oh man, Zul Jin's like 10% HP. Throw the Stim Drone on him. He'll go crazy during Testingo. And yeah, that's awesome. Um, but as you can see, you're kind of waiting for the perfect Zul Jin Stim Drone. And you've never got it. <laughs> like, it's you've never even been close to getting the perfect Zul Jin Stim Drone. So I think you don't want to don't go for it. Yeah, I... I think at that stage, that would have been a good time to ping some retreats and get your team to back off. Um, too greedy diving for that immortal. Ooh, that was kind of lucky. Uh, Alright, so that's actually funny. Zul'jin is asking about the earlier fight, not that one. <laughs> yeah, exactly like Drink and Run says. You know, just wait for, wait for the fight to be engaged and then just pop Stim Drone. Like, just go for it. Just go for it. Like, Zul'jin's in a good position, he's gonna get some attacks off, Stim Drone him, just let him go. Um, if you're gonna wait for him to test Dingo, it's gonna be too late most of the time. Or it's gonna be like the last fight where Zul'jin's already dead, feels bad. 
All right, nice stuff keeping him alive. We got a horrified flank, so this could potentially be a play. Got Sim drone in a few seconds as well. Okay. Stim drone appeared. What? Where is the Sultan Stim drone? What? Dude! Why is Stim droning Varian? Why? Alright, he got the kills anyway. <laughs> Poor Zul'jin though! No! Poor Zul'jin! Why? He's so good with Stim Drone! Poor guy! <laughs> Are you punishing him for like, why didn't you heal me? You're like, well, huh. Why didn't you heal me? You dare question me, Morales? I'm not gonna heal you, no sir. Poor guy. Poor guy. Hello, Winston. <laughs> I have to have Winston say hello to, to my stream when he comes in here. Not right, buddy. Yeah. We'll come say hello. <clears throat> okay, but yeah, so this is definitely something. You, you definitely... <laughs> use the Sim Drone and Zul'jin. Like, literally all of his damage comes from basic attacks. Like, all of his talents are in basic attacks. He's so good with Stim Drone. It's like, he, he is so good. He's he, he, he probably the best hero with Stim Drone. Off the top of my head. I'm pretty sure Zildjian is like the best hero with Stim Drone in the entire game. He's so good. No, oh well, we're sitting uh, AFK here. Interesting. Come down, make sure. No pup, yeah. You didn't deem him worthy of your precious Stim? Well, Stim Drone's not that precious. And Zildjian is always worthy, he's the most worthy. But yeah, I mean, like, right, right in the, like, I presume that you picked Morales to go with this, this little gym. Hang on, one second. Close the door. But yeah, I mean, I presume that you were actually picking, uh... You have the best things to say. Huh? Sure. <laughs> I, I, I presumed you picked Morales to actually synergize with Zildjian. So you need to do that. Again, like, it doesn't matter if you don't think the Zildjian is playing that well. Again, like we said in the first replay today, like, part of why the Zildjian's not having as much of an impact as you think he should is that you're not giving him Stim Drones. <laughs> so that's a huge part of it, right? But, like, it's just... Again, like, that's a waste of a Stim on the Zagara. Like, she's not going to do all that much with it either. Like, you can see she's just running in circles at the moment. It's not doing anything. Um, you, like, you need, you need, need, need to, to save it and use it on Zildjian. Like, it, it doesn't matter if he's playing it that badly. Like, you, you need to use it for that. Um, like, Varian's not gonna get any value out of it. It's like letting your tank die and be like, well, you know, he wasn't playing that well, so I didn't bother to heal him. It's like, well, you need to. It, that's your job in the team fight is to do that. Um, but yeah, I, I don't think the Zildjian has been playing that badly anyway. Um, I think with some stim drones he could have been owning them. Oh well, yeah, sorry, Butcher, Rainer, Zildjian, Gold and Auto Attack. All right, lost a couple of heroes there. You had to run out of mana. I wasn't looking, so I was looking at the chat there. But yeah, that's the main thing from this game. Well, two main things so far from this game is number one, be stim droning and supporting the Zildjian more. And number two, um, fixing some of these talent choices. Uh, what did we get at 16? Shield Sequencer. Safeguard can be cast twice. Alright, this is fine. I actually don't know this talent here very well. I don't play this hero. Um, second option is always good. These all look pretty good. I, I don't know which, which one is better. Um, someone can let me know in chat, actually, which is the best 16 for Morales. There's a talent here I don't know. Uh, but yeah, I mean, I don't think the block fits too well with this this team comp. I like Caduceus Reactor. That's great. It's a really nice talent choice. Gonna keep you sustained on mana. And shield will protect you from burst and leaming as well. It's all good. It's all good. Alright, this is nice too. Good race on this Immortal. And this Immortal probably should win you the game. Shield Sequencer is fine. Yeah, I thought it would be fine. 
Oh yeah, Caduceus 2.0 is definitely the best level 20, without a doubt. It's so, so good. Okay, again, we've got the Stim Drone on Barry, and this is like a huge mistake. Like, Zul'jin could be going absolutely nuts on these heroes right now. Okay, your team got a couple of kills. Okay, that's actually nicely done. This should be game right here. Um, shield sequence and the mana refund at 1 equals more mana for healing. Oh, that's true. So, feedback loop when it expires and you get cast twice. Oh, yeah. Okay. I dig that. That's pretty interesting. 45 mana each time and you get two casts. So, you get 45 mana back extra for free. All right. Yeah. That's interesting. But, yeah. Caduceus is super good. Oh, so they were flaming you for being level 100 player? <laughs> <laughs> Who bothers? Like, I don't know. The things people rage about. It's like you're. Everyone is gold. <laughs> it doesn't matter what level they are. Alright, anyway, this should be an uh, easy game. There shouldn't really be anything that even happens here at the end. Okay, you're just like AFK hitting core. But it, like, it doesn't really matter at this point, does it? 16, you go with two Ws. You can stack them for 30, 50 armor and target. Okay, cool. Sorry, I was tending to my kid. <laughs> Fair enough. All right, that's a good reason. I get distracted by my, my puppy. But yeah, I mean, like, at the end of this game, I think that's, a, like, uh, who is it said it in chat there? Uh... Zayer one said in chat, not a single Zul'jin stim drone in that entire game. Not like this. Yeah, exactly. Not a single Zul'jin stim. Ouch. It's like, you, you need, like, you're picking Morales. Here's the stats. Um, I mean, I don't know what you're looking for in terms, like, nothing stands out to me super much here. Uh, it looks fairly expected. Um... Oh, Li Ming took Ark on it. <laughs> I don't know why, <laughs> but she did. All right, cool. Um, but yeah, I mean, that's the main thing from this. Again, like the, 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 the main point with the Morales, I think a couple of main things. Smaller point is, you know, tweak the talents a little bit, like just this one and Irradiate. Just tweak them a little bit around to fit into the, the draft and the needs of the game a bit more. Like the automated block, just not not all that useful. If they just don't have anything that's going to be basic attacking you, really. I mean, like, if D.Va dives you... Anubarak doesn't hit that hard. Certainly not without 13. And D.Va, if she dives you, will just shred through block in a second anyway, so it's not really going to get any value. Um, so just tweak the talents a little bit. That's a smaller thing. The main thing is... Like, you need to stim drone Zul'jin. It's... And you need to not... What? 180k healing is what I was expecting. I mean, it's Morales. She always has, like, the highest healing numbers. Maybe Lucio could do higher, but... Um, it's like... You, you can't punish people because you don't think they're playing well. And then it's a self-fulfilling prophecy. It's like, you're going, Okay, well, I don't think the Zul'jin's playing well. I'm never going to stim drone him. Well, you just gimp your team fight and you gimp the Zul'jin because you remove the, the stim drone from him, which he's probably expecting to get. So it's a self-fulfilling prophecy. He's going to start... He's going to perform worse in the game because your composition has suddenly become dysfunctional because you're you're making the perp you're just you're breaking the purpose of it. You're taking the stim drone away from where it should be. So Zuljin will of course start then not being as impactful as he ought to be. Not because of him but because of you. So like it's very important not to punish your teammates and start misplaying because you think that someone isn't playing like up to snuff like if they're playing really badly then yes maybe you don't give them certain things um or if there's two legitimate choices like let's say you've got a zuljin and a vala you would normally stim drone zuljin but you're going okay well our vala player is much better i'll stim drone the vala but in a case like this especially where you don't have another good stim drone target you stim drone zuljin every single time regardless of how well of, of how well he's playing so yeah, that's the main thing. Yeah, I mean, like, there's nothing wrong with evaluating your teammates. I mean, it's something you're going to do, and it is an important skill. But don't be, like, you don't want to be too punitive about it. Um, 
I think the main thing is, like, like I said, if you've got a couple of legitimate targets for SimDrone, with the SimDrone example, yeah, you can pick and choose uh, based on skill if it is that big of a deal. But like in this case, with this comp, it, every time, it's a little gen, every time. Um, anyway, like just an interesting point uh, there at the end. I mean, kind of some other wonky talent choices and stuff. But uh, yeah, you're lucky. There's no Cocoon. That made your life a lot easier. Could have been tough if they had Cocoon. But yeah. <laughs> All right. We have time for one more, I think, uh, replay here. So let's see. Number five. This is a Diza Lunara game on Hanamura. All right, cool. Some Hanamura replay. Let's go for it. Yeah, it's true. Like in gold, there's going to be lots of talent builds that aren't quite right. Lots of talent builds that aren't quite right. That's just, that's life. Hey, I mean, I see like master and grandmaster players with the wrong talent builds. Usually not grandmasters. By the time people hit grandmaster, they normally got a really good build every time. But master players still screw up quite a lot. It's funny. In a depressing way. <laughs> um, okay, so... Lunara came here. I've been struggling a bit on Hanamura, but finding some luck with Lunara. I'm wondering if the plays were optimal here. Initially thought it might be better to have Lunara simply to push in waves while teammates escorted or delayed. Didn't quite go that way. Uh, ended up doing a lot of damage and uh, am I positioned correctly in the fights or what could I could do better? And this is going to be a gold 2 level game. So pretty much the same level of play as the last game we saw. Like top of gold. There's a guy called Feels Bad Man and Grandmaster. Yeah, it's like a smurf, right? I can't remember who it is. Someone. But yeah, I've seen him. He's good. He was in he was in one of my recent videos. He's playing Nazebo. Sonia? I think this is my Sonia video. Okay. Alright, let's go. Oh my god, Murky. <laughs> Alright. Nikosaru is saying, don't underestimate me. I'll go troll bills and win. Oh, good. <laughs> you went frog build Nazebo once in Curse Hollow 1. I mean, frog build Nazebo isn't awful. It's nowhere near as bad as your piano thrall build. Like, that thrall build is, like, the worst thing ever. At least toe build Nazebo does something. Like, it's not, it's not the best build by any means at all, or even close to it, but at least it's, it does something okay. Feels bad, man, is Yellow Flash Smurf. Oh, yeah, Yellow Flash is really good. Yeah, Murky, Murky for Bribe. I suppose it does work okay on this map. The only issue is that Murky is like late game scaling and this map is short. I mean, he's probably one of the... If not the weakest, he might even be the weakest Bribe here on this map. Because he's so late game focused and this is still such an early game focused map. Or mid, well, it's mid game focused map. I'm reported for dissing Piano Thrall. What do I think about False Dad? Top GM rank 6. Abuse the TM with silvers? Venom several times, money golds. You're talking about like Team League? Well, Team League isn't like a serious game mode. Just because the way the matchmaking is. I mean, kind of, but yeah. Um, I, I've never heard of him, to be honest with you. I've never seen him or heard of him. I presume he's not Europe. Play on EU. <laughs> I'm throw all OP. Oh, a team leak. Yeah, I don't know. Potato Soup 2. Try sending my diamond replay like two weeks, I guess. Diamond's my goal for now. Yeah, you've only got two weeks left in the season. I say, like, aim, try to hit platinum. Try to hit diamond next season. It is, you gotta, you'd have to play a lot of games to hit diamond in, in the couple of weeks left. I mean, if you want that, but it could go badly. Distress. He's from Europe, but he's a noob. Yeah, I mean, like, I've never seen him in a game, so... Who knows? Alright, cool, let's take a look at this one. So, uh, pausing and looking at comps. Um, got Alarak, you've got Murky, Lunara, Lucio, and Arthas. Enemy team has got a Zarya and a Varian, Nova, Jaina, and a Malf. 
right at the start, I'd be looking at this and going, okay, enemy team doesn't have a particularly good solo laner. It's probably just fine to put Murky in the solo lane and let the Alarak play in the in the four man. So that's something that could work. Um, Cause there's not, like Murky's really shit <laughs> at laning, but like he keeps respawning, uh, but he's really shit, but they don't have anyone, like they're not gonna be able to punish it overly much. I mean the JNM maybe, but probably get away with it. Um, I mean, this will probably work too. I mean, Alarak should win the solo lane, but I mean, Murky should probably be fairly useless down here. Um, he also didn't, I mean, Bribe is level one for Murky. Yeah, he didn't even take Bribe. So the Murky pick really sucks, honestly. Feels bad. You just have to deal with it as best you can. Here we are on Lunara, gone for natural perspective on one. Yeah, that's actually nice. Good against Nova. So you can obviously tell which one's a clone once you hit it with the spell. So that's cool. No murky pride. Feels bad, man. It does feel bad, man. Alright. Can I move the camera frame right after the B button at the bottom right? It's... Kind of annoying. We can't see the first two heroes in the top menu. Oh, yeah. There's uh, nothing too important there right now. I'll make sure to pop up the talent build. Is there a mod that makes Nub sound like Niku? It's <laughs> Niku's voice today. <laughs> anyway, I got some comments on my last YouTube video saying there's like two in a row. The first one was like, Niku's got the best voice ever. He's the best. And then the second one was, God, that guy, that Finnish guy is so annoying. I wish he'd shut up. Welcome to YouTube comments, Niku. Welcome. Um, you need to be super careful. Like, Zarya is actually really good against Lunara because you basically give her guaranteed energy. You can see she's at full energy. Right here, you want to be trying to kill her. Yeah, there we go. Nice one. Alright, and now you can, like, push this lane really hard. You're positioning too far forward, says the Lunara. You can... You can kite people, even from, like, max range, because you move quicker than nearly every hero. Um, you basically have, like, 20% move speed permanently from this. 20% faster from leaping short distances. So you can basically keep stutter stepping and attacking people from max range and never be out of range. Um, so you can exploit that. You never want to be like up in their face, really, because um, you're not gonna you're not gonna fall behind. Like not let's say like uh, Zuljin will fall behind. So you have to be kind of stutter stepping forwards more aggressively. Lunara can be more passive with their stutter stepping. Um, so that's something you can try. All right, pushing this in is is fine as well. Rip your team. I mean, you're the main range damage dealer. In fact, you're the only range damage dealer, so they're gonna have a tough time without you. Probably be better having Murky push this. Like again, Murky is just super useless. So rip. What? What is? What is this? Living the dream. Okay. Fish eye. Okay. Living the dream. Cool. Yeah, you probably want Murky to push, and you want to stick with the team. But yeah, rip. Dreamy, the YouTube compliment was yours. Shalelo. Ikasari, you got you got a fan. Aw, oh, Rip Nova OP. Aw, oh, Lucio got her. Um, this could get pretty scary pretty quick. Okay, yeah, good to back off. There's gonna be quite difficult for you to actually push this in. Good poke against Azaria. One little tip is that you can, you can, there's interesting things you can do with Lunara, with the Q and the W in particular. You can use W to make landing Q much easier, because it's normally quite hard to land. Uh, yeah, you guys should not have probably kept going here. This is going to work out nice though from Alarak, nice roam. Rip you. Feels bad. I think you had Q available, I wasn't looking quite there. But yeah, you can use W to slow them down, hit them with a Q. Pretty useful for laning in the early game. Uh, then depending on what seven you get, you probably want to use Q into W. But yeah, this is this is uh, gold two. This is gold two. So yeah, I think they're like I feel like you overcommitted with the Lucio. Um, it almost worked out with the Alarak roam down, but you guys were ultimately outnumbered for most of that fight, and it, it showed in the end. So yeah, you kind of just want to be a bit more patient and then push in. Um, it really sucks that you don't have a bribe. So, I mean, just in terms of how your team is, is playing the Hanamura map, definitely not ideal. He is so lucky to not die right there. Holy shit. Okay, no, he did die. 
I was gonna say, if he survives, that is very lucky. But yeah, like, no bribe, no one taking the Bruiser Camp. This is a, a big loss. The Bruiser Camp is so powerful. It gives you so much, um, so much experience. Uh, it's almost like being a talent tier up, the heal is so powerful for whatever hero has it. It's kind of like an ult in some ways, you know, it's super strong. Okay, yeah, pretty much want to run away here. It's just a losing fight. Arthas will secure payload in the meantime, so at least there's that. Looks like Alarok's actually gonna keep chasing in there and he's gonna get himself killed. That's unfortunate. Nothing you can do about that. Um... Yeah, you guys want to be super safe. You just want to stall out their payload here and let Murky YOLO split push. This is so risky. Coming in here is super risky. Like, this could end horribly for you guys. You don't want to be here. Okay, right there with Lunara, you had a good opportunity to hit a Q through the whole, like, the damage dealers and then slow them down with W, which might... I say might very uh, loosely have saved Arthas. Oh, wrong level 7. Yeah, Wild Vigor. I really don't like Wild Vigor that much. Um, I think Splintered Spear is usually better. That being said, with Azaria, Splintered Spear cannot can work pretty badly sometimes. Nature's Culling can be really good, especially on this map. I'd probably be going for Nature's Culling. Uh, you might get away with Wild Vigor and like, just try focus down on the back lines, but it could also hurt you quite a lot. We shall see. Generally speaking, Wild Vigor, not a good choice though. A good poke there. Nice on the Varian as well. But yeah, you, you want to make sure not to hit him while he's got his, his stuff on. His parry on. It's not going to be good. You're just going to give him resets. This is a really good time to focus that Zarya. You got this full energy Zarya with no shield right there hitting your team. You want to kill her as quick as you can. Okay, that's the dead Nova as well. Yeah, you don't need to chase that too much. Murky is still getting split push value. That was a really good fight for your team. That was huge. You guys won a 4v5 right there. So that's a really big deal. Oh, that's a really big deal. Jet, you're doing it okay. Um, you can be a little bit more aggressive with your positioning. Again, like I said, because you got that extra move speed, you can kind of find the rhythm and you can just keep firing off basic attacks pretty much on cooldown uh, from range. And that's one of Lunara's strengths is that she gets so much consistent damage. It's so much guaranteed damage because she is so safe at getting those basic attacks off. Um, so that is something that you can use to your advantage. Uh, okay, we've gone for Thornwood Vines. I think if you're going for Thornwood Vines, you definitely don't want Wild Vigor, basically. Uh, Wild Vigor works okay with... It, it, it only really works with Leaping Strike in my opinion. Um, that was a good Thornwood Vines. That's another good Thornwood Vines. Again, you're standing too close here. Yep. And you're gonna get killed. Too close. You got two kills in the end, but you could have got those two kills without dying yourself. Again, hop around at max range, kite them around. And yeah, just kiting. Kiting is the name of the game. Kiting is the name of the game. Uh, Nimble Wisp. Oh, sorry. Yeah, uh, Nimble Wisp. Yep. He has gone for Nimble Wisp. Which is good, because it's the best. Overall. Let's watch Murky until you respawn. Look at him go. He really showed her. Alright, let's come back to you. You're coming bottom lane. <laughs> um, Alright. But yeah, on Hanamura in particular, if I was running Lunara, I'd probably be going for Nature's Culling. Because it's just, it is such a huge deal to actually push down and destroy forts. And especially when you look at your team, you don't have the best pushing power. Like, Alarak, not very good. Murky's not bad. Lucio's terrible. Arthas is mediocre. I mean, getting the Nature's Culling for that split push power could be such a huge deal to actually destroy the forts. Because that's what this game really comes down to is actually destroying um, forts and getting getting the fort destroyed. Oh yeah, we got triple tap from Nova, hype. Very nice. <laughs> I think level 13 is a pretty interesting choice for you. But 
that's a nice four to the whole team. So for example, right there in that fight, there was a while where you're kind of hopping around, not getting basic attacks off, and you kind of hopped right up to Malf. You gave Malf a little love, love kiss, a little peck on the cheek as you're going past. Um, you don't really want to do that. So yeah, just small mechanical things for the stutter steps. Level 13 is going to be super interesting because um, for Lunara here, Greater Spell Shield is very appealing in this game. Uh, otherwise, Unfair Advantage. It's really choice between the two. So, um, Unfair Advantage is a lot more damage, but that's not necessarily going to be the best thing. Greater Spell Shield would be really useful against Nova in particular, and the Jaina. So, it's an interesting choice. Okay, you're going to get to push this in. That's nice. But you guys are certainly behind at this point. The good news is the enemy team hasn't done a great job of pushing in your structures either, so that's cool. Let's see what you pick up here at 13. I'm quite curious about this one. Uh, Janus instantly wipes out your wave. Feels bad. Gonna go for Giant Killer. It's a definitely a bad choice. <laughs> I don't like the Giant Killer. Yeah, so you felt, you noticed, so you're saying the Nova is bad, and you felt confident about dodging Jaina. Giant Killer, I don't think it's good. I mean, number one, the main target for Giant Killer really here is Varian, and you're not going to be hitting Varian much because he's got parry and he's got lift by the sword. It's going to be really bad. Uh, Zarya, the other one, she's got shields, so again, not a very good target. And then the other heroes are really squishy. You're just not going to get all that much value out of Giant Killer as compared to the other talents that you could be taking. Um, that's kind of like the big deal here. Kind of the big deal here. I mean, if they didn't have Varian or Zarya, I mean, you can totally go for like a... There is a basic attack, kind of Lunara build, with like Wild Vigor, Leaping Strike, Giant Killer, and then Invigorating Spores. That can totally work. Um, but I don't think it's it's that good against a... I don't know, it could work in this game. But without Leaping Strike, I don't see it being that effective. Yeah, it would be nice if they made like some sort of Lunara with max HP poison damage. That would be pretty interesting. Again, you guys are murky split pushing. Oh god, that positioning was really bad. <laughs> what are you doing there running around? That's really bad. But again, like what I was going to say is, you know, murky is split pushing. It's their whole team. Of course, you guys are going to lose that fight. You guys are like outnumbered. It's not a good spot to be in. All right, now they've split up. Not too good. Okay, you think you did pick Invigorating? All right, well, that's good. I think Invigorating is probably the a decent choice here in this game. Uh, it's a pity you didn't go for Leaping Strike, so. It, it, yes, it is three seconds of poison per hit. Uh, the thing is with Leaping Strike and Giant Killer, Invigorating Spores and Wild Vigor, you got a lot of single target burst. So you can burst someone down. I mean, I don't think it's the best, but... That's what it is. No barrier on Lucio? Lucio does have sound barrier, yeah. We also have Centragosa on Arthas, which is a terrible choice. Rip Lucio. Nothing you can do about that. Okay, and this is this is where it gets tough as Lunara, because Zarya's shield comes in, saves the hero, and there's nothing you can do about that. Alarak going in, feels bad, he gets killed. You threw that ore right through the whole team. You don't want to still be fighting this. You want to just give this up, unfortunately, I think. Oh, never mind. The murky flank is pretty good. The murky flank is very good. Arthas lands a good route. Enemy team screwed that up. So what happened right there, that shouldn't have gone so well for you. The reason that went so well is that they split up. They sent, like, two or three heroes up to push that payload. They left two or three in the lane. All they had to do, if they had moved as a team, you would have died so badly. You would have died so badly right there. Like, picking that fight was actually a really bad idea for you. You got away with that because they messed up, basically. Murky got a nice kill there. And that should be a fort dead, so that's good. Now, you guys only have one shot left on your payload, though, so that is pretty rough. Um... That is a good point as well. Unfair advantage, right? So this is more damage heroes that are slowed. Um, so that synergizes insanely well with Arthas, who just slows people all the time. So you're going to get loads of poison damage. Loads and loads of poison damage. 
Lunara Arthas is a pretty old and classic combo that's very, very powerful. Very powerful. A Murky does slows as well, so yeah. Would have been a nice choice. Certainly, like, that's what I was saying. It's really, it's between unfair advantage and greater spell shield, really, uh, in this particular game. I mean, I think, like, nature's culling into unfair would have been pretty good. Like you said, you could probably dodge most of the stuff with greater spell shield, except the Nova could be a pain in the ass. I suppose you can rely on Lucio to save you, though. <laughs> Murky gets a really good kill right there. Okay, great focus fire on the Nova. That's actually really good. Want to focus the Jaina now? Alright, you can kite Varian for days. Okay, whoa, whoa! That was very close to you getting yourself killed. <laughs> I was very close to getting yourself killed. You never want to move into melee range. Never ever. You know, that works out nicely for your team. Looks like this will probably be a win here. They're dead for a long time. All you gotta do is push that last payload. Looks good. What are the situations where you should pick Karazim? Uh, Karazim is like a good aggressive support. Um, I, I, Karazim's really strong. I think Karazim's fantastic. And you're not using the Wisp too much. That's true. The thing with Hanamura is you can kind of predict a lot of where the opponent is, so the Wisp isn't going to be super useful. Okay, that positioning was kind of crazy all over the place. You kind of walked into all of that. I mean, you should have been killing that Jaina from a much earlier point in the game. But hey, this worked out. <laughs> All right, and this is game. All right, cool. So, uh, interesting game. I say with Lunara, uh, the talent build is a little, a little bit wonky. I mean, to be honest, like these three talents do synergize together really well, so that's good. Leaping Strike works better with this than Thornwood Vine does, though. So that's something I would consider. Um, I'd say, like honestly, as well, usually. It can work. With Arthas, you're probably usually better off going for the, um, you know, the uh, Unfair Advantage and Thornwood Vine uh, plus Starwood Spear build. And you're just spreading poison through the enemy team. They're all slowed down by Arthas. You do tons of AoE damage. But yeah, I think you played this. You played it pretty well, man. You played this one pretty well. Pretty well. Um, I like it. Late game, their, their team really fell apart. I think one of the big things in this game is really, especially early game, you guys were losing. You kept puppy's crying a lot. You were playing a lot of, uh, your guys were picking a lot of like 4v5 fights or just fights where you were down, where Murky was not there or split pushing or something and went kind of badly. Um, so that's kind of probably the main thing to watch out for. Um, yeah, and then watch out for the stutter stepping, never get into melee range. Uh, and uh, yeah, I think I think for the most part you play, you play pretty well, to be honest with you. Not perfect, but you play pretty well. Um, yeah, for, for the Lunara thing, I think, yeah, work on the stutter stepping for sure. That's the main thing. And, you know, never go into melee range of, of a hero that can kill you like that, like unnecessarily. You can do it when it works out, when it's going to work out well. But let's say, for example, there's that one point where Varian was dying. And literally his dying gasp, he was like, going to kill Lunara. And he like hopped into his face and said, he's just like, I'm going to sit here and hit you and hop backwards. Um, so that's, that's one kind of important thing. But yeah. Her movement is weird. Her movement is weird, to be fair. It is weird. Um, yeah, that is going to be uh, the end of the stream here for today, though, guys. Thank you for tuning in. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed. Sorry, there's a bunch of replays. Didn't get to. That is always the way. Um, I'll be back next Thursday for more viewer replays. Next stream here on Zola, for me, will be on Monday. Monday. That's why I'll be streaming. New, new day next week for me. Uh, which will be kind of like a new player-focused type stream. So... We'll see how that one goes. Um, so yeah, I hope uh, hope you enjoy. Yeah, Lunara is very like Callista from League of Legends if you play that game. Yeah, very like her. Um, but yeah, I'm not sure what the other streams are. There should be info in the description anyway for all the different streamers that are going to be on. Uh, but yeah, I will be back myself on, mon on Monday, probably for some of Adam's stream. So I will catch you during that, and uh, yeah, I hope uh, hope to see you then. Guys, have a great weekend. I might do some streaming on my own channel over the weekend. We'll see. 
We'll see. And yeah, I'll, I'll talk to you all very soon. Thanks for watching, guys. Bye.